following is Q13 Channel 10 Z48 presentation. Welcome to the home of the Lobos and live Lobo football excitement. Today, the UNM Lobos meet the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Live coverage of today's game is brought to you by your Albuquerque Ford dealers, Rich Ford and Bob Turner's Ford Country. By Southwest Airlines, flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. And by Pizza Hut, great pizza for a great value. Call Pizza Hut. Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. It's the University of New Mexico Lobos against the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Powers. Welcome back for another edition, another season of Take the first step toward their first back-to-back -back seasons in three years. They face a question marks. Will they be recruited today? They have three quarterbacks. We find who the starter will be. A minute, 96% of their offense is gone. Who will fill and their need to be answered as far as time is concerned? And this year's my broadcast partner, Ted Dawson. And, and Ted, what do you make of It's kind of fun. I'll tell you, there's nothing as exciting as the opener of college football, and this is a great opener. This is a team, a uh, somewhat powerhouse in the Southwest Conference, who decided, quite frankly, to turn their back on the Lobos and the WAC to go with the new Big 12. With Texas and Texas A&M and Baylor, but I think this is this gives the Lobos a chance for something to prove, a chance that maybe that uh, the WAC is a little stronger than a lot of people think they are. And I think this is going to be a good test for both teams today. Plenty of Texas players for New Mexico, including the quarterback Stony Case, is making a strong bid for All America. Yeah, it cost him a lot to come down here today. He's got half the free world here visiting, and so do a lot of other Texas players. A lot of kids from Dallas have, have got family and friends. To uh, uh, Terrence Sharper, who said that he had like 30 people coming over from Dallas on a bus today just to watch it. Case will have some new receivers to throw to, and they have some big shoes to fill. Gone are Winston, and gone is O'Bannon. We're talking about Gavin Perlman and Manley Woods. I'll tell you, Gavin Perlman, he is no bigger than my bank account, but I'll tell you what, he is an exciting little ball player. He's got great speed, he runs sensational routes, and of course, Manley Woods, there are people who say he is a pro prospect if he just gets some of his work habits in shape. He is an outstanding receiver. Lobo Louie is here, uh, a thousand or so Lobo fans also here. We will have the opening kickoff in a moment, the Lobos and Red Raiders. 1994 season, Nate the Vale team on the toss. And half. Matt DeBuck is to keep along. Stacy. Mike, the wind is blowing very, very strong down there in the field today. And I think the Lobos want the wind to their backs. As you take a look at the two head coaches here today, Spike Dykes on your left, and of course, Dennis Franchoni, who's brought in a new winning attitude here to Lobo football. Nathan Vale set to kick this season off. Of course, that shot of the two coaches was taped uh, before the game. They are not out in the middle of the field right now. Here's Nathan Vale. Lobos hoping for a big year from him. Kick is long and deep and will not re be returned. The Red Raiders will play it at their own 20. And let's take a look and see who, in fact, will start. We got the word. It was Tony Darden, number 11, a redshirt freshman. And still waiting for the Red Raider quarterback to come out in the field. And there he is. It is Tony Darden. Darden is a 6-foot, 180-pound redshirt freshman out of San Antonio. Here's a kid that is a senior through for 4,570 yards. Spike Dykes uh, had two other quarterbacks to choose from as the Red Raiders hustle up to the line. He will go with Darden. We'll probably see all three of them today. His running back is Alton, fake to him, and the whistle stops play even before we get started. And this is what Spike Dykes was really concerned about, as these young kids on this team would be so excited they'd make a lot of mistakes. Here's a chance to take a look at the Red Raider offense. Crane is the eye back, Walker the fullback with very little experience. Adams is the flanker, Scoville and Ayler round out the skill positions. Walker's even a walk-on. And the offensive front, uh, big but not that experienced, led by Scott Fitzgerald, who is a all-conference uh, second-team player uh, on the offensive front for the Red Raiders. Well, the penalty was against Texas Tech, so they move back five, and they'll try it again. Walker in motion. The fake to the eye back. Darden coming out, and the ball's tipped away beautifully by New Mexico. 
classic out. Yeah, nice. That's Charles Butler, but apparently they're going to say he went over the back. Butler, an outstanding defensive player, one of those uh, kids out of Dallas Carter High School. Defensive front for New Mexico. Billingsley, he is from Lubbock. Lisker, the nose tackle, and Burris. Those two are very big. Billingsley, a little bit on the light side, but a first competitor. The linebackers, Coverly, Irwin getting his first start uh, today, along with Johnson and Thomas. Those are the linebackers. First start for Art Celestine, a cornerback. We mentioned Butler is, is a veteran. Terrence Sharper will be the safety, along with Trent Coy. And they will call that on Butler, pass interference. So Texas Tech will get the ball. It is a first and 10 at the 23. Hand off up the middle. It goes to Alton Crane. A short gain there for the Red Raiders. And if, if any gain at all. Starting it off, Blake Irwin gets a, his first tackle as a, as a uh, college football player. The redshirt freshman out of Boulder, Colorado. Has a great background. His dad and his uncle both played for Colorado. Of course, you know his uncle is Hale Irwin, the fine pro golfer. Bo Adams in at wide receiver. He's number 10 for Texas Tech. He's in motion. Heading upfield. First pass, the second pass of the ball game. Off to the fullback. That's Crane, the wide, uh, actually the, the eye back. Austin Thomas had the first shot at him and missed, but still, they held him to about a four-yard gain. Good defense by the Lobos so far. Man, everybody talks about the Lobo offense. I'll tell you what, look out for some of these defensive players. They fly around. They really do an outstanding job. Thomas, number 34. They'll bring up third down and four at the 29. And they're missing one of their best linebackers, Chris Carroll, number two, sophomore out of Dallas, who had 73 tackles last year. was right there, all 315 pounds of him doing his little strut. 6'4", 315 pound, two-year Letterman senior out of Tab, Virginia. And I'll tell you what, can he block the sun? And can he block the blockers? He weighs, he weighs 315, but he's down about 30 pounds, and that's exactly where they want him. Brad Cade coming in for the first punt of the ball game. And Winslow Oliver is the lone receiver for the Lobos. Nice punt. Oliver calls for the fair catch and will take it there at the 30. 35, my great field position for the Lobos. Lobos will take over from there. We will take a break. Lobos get the ball for the first time. Outstanding start for the Lobo defense that time, Ted. Uh, they looked good in the first couple of series, or the first series of the game. 13 minutes left to play here in the uh, first quarter, and I'll tell you what, you couldn't ask for better defense. Even with the penalty, the Lobos they absolutely flat shut them down. As you take a look at the All-American candidate, Stoney Case. Hard to believe he's finally a senior. Hate to lose this kid. And then they'll go right up the gut. Winslow Oliver, the handoff cutting back. He picks up uh, four, maybe five yards for New Mexico. Oliver averages 4.4 yards a carry throughout his career. 391 carries for 1,808 yards. Oliver's joined in the backfield when they go to that two-back set by Chris Shelton. The receivers are uh, Zach Wesley, Manley Woods. You'll see Gavin Pullman in there, the tight end, Big David Sloan. Offensive front, a lot of fresh faces for the Lobos, but they, we are told, are going to be outstanding eventually. Case back to pass, little swing out to Oliver. Cuts back, past the 40, out to the 41 before he's finally tackled by Chris Oria, defensive lineman. Good defensive coverage that time by the Red Raiders. There's Ori, as we mentioned, joined by Ritter, Wickware, outstanding up front. Byron Wright, whose brother plays for the Lobos. The linebacking crew, this is their strength. Zach Thomas, one heck of a linebacker in the middle. And the secondary, especially the corners, are excellent. Led by Cat Adams and Sean Hurd. A very good crew right there. Chris Griffin has come in to block for the Lobos. And Case will take the option. A stutter steps, goes out to about the 45. It will be very close to the first down mark. Coming up to making the uh, making the tackle is Robert Johnson. I don't think he got a very good spot, Mike. No, it doesn't. It looked like he was on the line. And now maybe Dennis Franchoni has his first decision to make. Well, David Sloan says, I want to play. Okay, go on in there then. Also coming in, number 27, Cleveland Smith at running back. This will be his first play for New Mexico. And the Lobos will go for it. 
with the two tight ends, Griffin and Sloan, both in. The 30,000 plus now, roaring, full house backfield, and an offsides call on number 12, I am anticipating. We'll have to wait and see what the officials say. Marcus Coleman. Yeah, jumped right offside, and, and that's exactly what Franchoni wanted. They're pointing towards the Red Raiders. And that's the call. Marcus Coleman is a junior, two-year letterman out of Dallas, one of the many Dallas players on this Red Raider team. Had three interceptions last year and 80 tackles. First down. Doyle Jackson is from the Southwest Conference. He's the referee. The umpire is from the WAC, Tom Myers. Split crew here today. The ball spotted right on the 50. First and 10 from there. Elbows go with two backs. Gavin Perlman in motion. And off right up the middle for a nice gain. That's Chris Shelton, the fullback. Shelton is a redshirt freshman out of Palestine, Texas. Just 5'10", 218 pounds. Good blocker. He's been put in there primarily to block. But you can see he can hit those quick hitters also. Well, the offensive front just doing a very nice job. And, and I'm sure the Red Raiders weren't expecting him to get the ball at this point. Matt Tyner, who's a redshirt freshman, helped out on that double team block along with the center, Brandon Turner. Second and a long two now. Trip set to the top of the screen. Eric Young is the running back. Here comes the blitz. Case gets rid of it and has his man, Manly Woods, inside the 25. Sean Hurt on the coverage, but Manly Woods making his presence felt already. And that's the Stony case we've heard so much about. And Manly Woods, who, of course, did not play last uh, year because of a suspension. And watch Case under heavy pressure here. Just rolls to his right. Great touch. That's a 20-yard gain. First catch for Woods in two years. Mike, when we have time, I'll tell you about a conversation I had with the scout of the San Francisco 49ers compared Case to Joe Montana. And up, off the middle. Shelton does a nice job after getting hit initially to break through for a short game, but at least it's a game. And Byron Wright was there to make the hit. Actually, it turned out to be a lot bigger game than you thought. Yeah. Right? Because Shelton just kept his feet going and picked up a good, strong four yards. Inside the 20. Zach Wesley will go to the top of your screen. Manley Woods near the bottom. The slot receiver is Perlman. Young again is the setback. The research to Perlman. Nothing doing. All over that play that time, number 99, William Renner. They practiced that all week. Every practice they went through that about 10 times. They thought that would be a very effective play against this uh, Red Raider defense, but not the first time. Well, that'll bring up third down and 11. Ritter is a senior, two-year letterman out of Odessa. Same place that Stoney played for. Well, it may have been a great play except for the one guy who was smart enough to stay home because other than that, it looked like the Lobos were executing just right. Big third down play. Third down and 11. Oh, he's still in there. Pressure. And Pace is still on his feet. Gets rid of it. And almost intercepted. Perlman should have had that, and he had some running room. He had enough to pick up the first down if he could have come down with that ball. Great athletic effort by Stoney Case, however. Well, I thought he was down. He was sliding down, getting rid of the ball. And it would have been a completed pass. Look at that move right there. Ritter goes flying by. Damon Wickware all over him. Great athletic move. Vail with a field goal attempt. Will be spotted at about the 32, 42 yarder on its way. Plenty of distance and true. Nathan Vale, who had struggled a little bit last year, comes through with his first kick of the season. And Lobos, the New Mexico Lobos on the board, three nothing. Four for Lubbock after this. Ford Country and Rich Ford present great moments in Lobo football. And With 263 catches and 4,254 yards. Can you name this great Lobo player? If you think something, take a look at this. Right now at your Albuquerque. 
on November 18, 1989, in the game against Fresno State, Terrence Mathis became the NCAA's all-time leading receiver. A great moment in Noble football history. Well, the drive stalled when they got into the red zone, but the Lobos managed to kick the field goal. Ten play drive, took 422 off the clock, 41-yard field goal by Nathan Vale, puts New Mexico up 3-0. The thing about that drive, Mike, is they were moving so well on just the standard option offense, and they tried to get tricky, and that's when they got in trouble. They tried to reverse that uh, went for a loss. Then Case went out on the, on the naked bootleg, and uh, was all swarmed over. Bale's kick again. It's deep and will not be returned by Texas Tech. And we have our eyes on Winslow Oliver, the local running back. He is on the bench. His right foot is being worked on, and he has his helmet off off uh, during the middle of that last drive by New Mexico, so we will keep our eye on him. He's now trying to walk a little bit, and, and he had that injury problem with his foot last year. And Coach Fran said he is in the best shape of any athlete he has ever coached anywhere. It would be a shame to see him hurt this early. Tony Darden comes back in at quarterback, freshman from San Antonio. Alton Crane is the running back, and again, we have a flag before we get things going. The center forgot to hike the ball. John Lister made sure he paid for it. Great defensive front line for the Lobos, headed by Billingsley, who's not that big at 236. But here's a guy who had 75 tackles last year. John Lister, who is big at 6'3", 275. Offense. Still close down. He had 26 tackles last year. And, of course, big Damon Burrows at 6'4", 317, who had 50 tackles last year. Already three penalties for 15 yards for Tech, and they love to run a no-huddle or a mini-huddle offense where they hustle up to the line and hope to catch the defense napping. And I think with a young freshman quarterback, that makes it more difficult. I'm not sure they can do that without Robert Hall, who was their outstanding all-conference quarterback last year. And on the handoff, up the middle, some room into the secondary. First down and more for Texas Tech. I'll tell you, Charles Butler played for it, paid for it at the end of that run. He got absolutely smacked. He was standing there just waiting. Watch what happens to Butler at the end of this run. Okay, they make the tackle. Now Butler's standing there. Wham! Terrence Sharper in there to help out along with Rod Coverley. First and ten. Well, it is second down. My mistake. I thought he had gotten the first down. Just short of that five-yard penalty. That made it a little bit more difficult. Now they move across for the first down. Todd Walker picking up the initial first down of the game for the Red Raiders. And Dan Coverley in there, and it is a first down, Texas Tech. Jared Feebigger comes in. He will play one of the tight end spots for Texas Tech. Hi, Greg Remington is just a four informed us that Winslow Oliver has like turf toe, and they're trying to create a sponge to put in his shoe, and he, they expect to be back. There's the fake, Darden. for this, well, I guess the both officials made the call, but a couple of close ones going against New Mexico. Bill Scoville is a sophomore from Dallas. He's the kid whose grandfather started the Cotton Bowl. The winner of the high school Davey O'Brien Award a couple of years ago back in Texas. See, right there, I think they call it. He just went up, put his shoulder in the middle of his, of his back, and that's what they called. Uh, it's funny, the official closest to us made the call. And that's, uh, you know, which his back was uh, away from us. Well, it's awfully early to be getting on the officials, I yes. guess, isn't it? <laughs> we have a whole season ahead. Tech quickly up now. And another whistle before we got the play going. And this will be the fourth time we've seen this. That's Alton Crane, number three, was a senior out of Waco. Had 138 yards on 30 carries last year. Only one touchdown. Legal procedure, Texas Tech. They'll march at five back. Foul is dead ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. 
Well, that's uh, interesting how the official hadn't really set the ball for play when they had, by the time they snapped the ball. And this is the third time the Red Raiders have started first and 15. Six penalties in the game so far. Going left side, Crane. Pretty good looking running back. Irwin there to help out along with Lisker. And at the bottom of the pile, Dan Coverland. Nine-yard gain for Alton Crane. Of course, Texas Tech without Bam Morris, the Doak Walker winner from last year, went pro a year early. Number four, Byron Hensbart is in the lineup. He's a high school All-American out of DeSoto, Texas. A lot of folks wanted this kid, number four. First collegiate run, right side, some room. Waits for his blockers nicely inside the 40. Excellent run by the kid who had 4,013 yards, averaging 8.7 yards per carry as a high school star. Notre Dame wanted this young man. Billingsley gets double teamed there. And then can't get away, can't turn the corner up. Butler gets an excellent block on him. And finally, Coit comes up to make the stop. Little equipment problem right there for Hans Bard. There's Crane. Johnson makes the hit along with Sharper. But the Texas Tech front line doing the job on this drive. Roston Thomas checking back in to the logo lineup. Well, Spike Dykes didn't seem to be too concerned about his offense, and maybe he knew something the rest of us didn't. Uh, obviously, a lot of faith in this crane and his offensive front as we look at double T and the last rider, a longtime tradition here at Texas Tech. is there, just shy of the first down marker, but there is a, there's a penalty. Daniel Johnson with the stop. He's had come right here in Lubbock. Had 26 tackles a year. He had an interception. He took back 76 yards. 5'11", 216 pounders. And a break for the Lobos. He will go against Texas Tech. They're still discussing it. Over 30,000 fans here expected today, uh, near the 35,000 area. They've got Nebraska coming in here on Thursday. Well, that's why this game is so important to Texas Tech. They follow this up with Nebraska, then Oklahoma, and a loss here, and they're looking at an 0-3 start. Foul was an illegal block by the offense. Now saying second and 14 at the 43. Quickly up to the line, Sheldon Bass in another freshman. There's Darden on the fake, being pursued by Burrus. Pass is complete, out of bounds. On the coverage there is number 34 for New Mexico. That's Thomas uh, Roston Thomas, and it was in fact Sheldon Bass that made the tackle, uh, that made the catch. Byron Hanspart has come back in, and here's a look at the Lobo rankings from last year in defense. Boy, what a change from three years ago. Scoring defense first in the whack for New Mexico. Third down conversions, which had been a problem in the past, just excellent. And Fred Weil and his staff think they have the horses to maybe do those kind of numbers again. It's third and five. Lost the field in a poorly thrown pass. I'm not sure if Darden was hit or the ball was tipped. At any rate, it's short, and that will bring up fourth down for Texas Tech. He had Mitchell wide open up there. And let's see, a long delay here as a decision is about to be made on what to do, whether to kick the field goal or go for it on fourth down. And now they are going to go for it. It took a long time for the, the play clock to get going. They have 14 seconds now to get the play off. Scoble is back in, along with Bass as one of the wide receivers. Fourth and five. They may be trying to draw the yeah, they're taking outside. their time, and finally they will take the penalty, which may hurt them as far as a field goal try. I think they're going to try to punt it. Now with the swirling wind, uh, that's probably a good shot. The foul is the dead ball. Apparently the wind is 
stiff enough going that way where they figured they wouldn't have had much of a chance anyway. Terrence Sharper is the man back deep, sending it to the 10-yard line. Yeah, normally Winslow Oliver would be there, but obviously that turf toe is uh, still a problem. Let's see if they do the pooch kick into the corner. Surrounded the ball. How can you let that happen? That's what drives coaches crazy. 39 yard kick. 5.40 to go in the first quarter of play. New Mexico nursing a 3 0 lead. We'll check on Winslow Oliver when we come back. Here's a look at the series history between these, these two teams. Obviously, domination by the Red Raiders 27 5 2. They've won four straight over the Lobos, but to be honest, the series has been competitive over the last 10 to 12 years. And this may be the best Lobo team who's ever come here. Texas Tech 16-2 and two on this field against New Mexico. The Lobos have five of their six wins against Southwest Conference teams against Texas Tech. So they've had some trouble against the Southwest Conference. First and 10 for New Mexico at the 20. Up the middle, Eric Young thought about spinning and lost the ball. Still loose. the fumble. Javar Thomas out of Dallas, a senior, gets the fumble recovery. And Eric Young is still down on the turf. He may have uh, twisted a knee on the move here. He just got nailed. Yeah, he, really, he is hurt, I'll tell he you. He really looked awkward going through that. I thought he was going to make a spin move, and instead he kind of hopped on that knee. And Texas Tech was there to make the recovery. So it's the first turnover of the season to New Mexico, something they've been real good about. And there's a look at Young, and this creates a big problem for the Lobos. If Winslow Oliver can't go and Eric Young can't go, next on the list is a young man named Cleveland Smith. Well, Tony Darden will bring them back up to the line. This is the third series for Tech. They have yet to score. The handoff to Crane again. Short game. Oh, excuse me, that was hand spot with the run. And Chris Carroll is in the ball game now. He's the one that ran him out. Carroll injured an ankle, sprained it about three weeks ago. And the guys thought he would be ready by now, but he just hasn't been able to get in shape. And one more look at Young. Watch his foot there. And you can see it kind of gets bent around under underneath the pile. Second and seven, Tech. Again, it's the young man with the run up the middle and spot. Roston Thomas there to make the initial stop. Creighton Solomon is in there as well, number 96. Thomas out of Marina Del Rey, which of course is a suburb of Los Angeles, had 40 tackles last year. Good solid 6'4", 230-pound junior, two-year learner. Big third down play once again for the Lobos. Five minutes left to play here in the first quarter. Bo Adams brings the play in. He will go wide to the left along with Field Scoble. And Hanspart stays in a running back. Straight back in the pocket, down the sidelines. Well overthrown that time, looking for Adams. Well covered by Trent Coyle again on the sideline. Oh, so the defense is held. They've given up some yards, but uh, crucial situations, they've gotten strong. Darden talking with his offensive coordinator. Who happens to be a former University of uh, New Mexico uh, assistant coach along with Spike Dice. We'll talk more about that when we have a chance here as Brad Cade gets ready to punt it away. From the same place he punted last time. And again, it's sharper. Let's see if, if he does as nice a job and high. And not quite a little deeper, but this time it is caught. Except it scooted into the end zone. 39 last yeah. time, but this was clearly better. <laughs> better special team. Better result. 4.35 left to go. First quarter of play. The Lobos lead at 3-0. Now the big question is who's going to come out of tailback? Oh, 
we interrupted the U.S. Open tennis from New York for our uh, college football University of New Mexico game today. That will resume after our coverage of the Lobos. So tennis fans, you can have your cake and eat it too today with the Lobos and the U.S. Open. And of course, Van Tate will have all the highlights for you coming up on the news. out of Marino Valley, California, and Cal Berkeley transferred in from UC Berkeley. Byron Wright with the stop. Now his brother, Antoine, is here for New Mexico. He's a uh, player for the Lobos who will not likely see any action. Well, now we're going to test that big, strong offensive line, headed, of course, by 6'7", 363-pound Cal as you take a look at some of the Lobo fans who made the trek over here to Lubbock, uh, Lubbock today. Smith again the run. He's rolling to his right. In trouble. Gets rid of it. A dangerous pass. Almost kicked off. And Marcus Coleman. Coleman has been all over in the last couple of series for Texas Tech. Coleman had three interceptions last year and should have had his first this year. And this is what uh, Fr uh, Coach Franchoni said that Stoney wasn't doing anymore. He wasn't making those kind of mistakes. He wasn't forcing the ball into trouble. But boy, he certainly forced that one. Threw it off the wrong foot. Looking for Steve Pagador there, a JC transfer. And a very poor decision by Stoney. Third and nine. The only JC transfer the Lobos brought in this year. Texas, 6'2", 264-pound senior. He's a senior class vice president here. 3.4 great point out. The Lobos will come up with their first punt of the game. And Kobe Manso will come in to do the honors, replacing Mike Nesbitt, who still hopes to land a job somewhere in the NFL. Manso is a guy who played football, basketball, track, pre-law major out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Dane Johnson, one of the setbacks, awaiting the punt. The high one, not particularly good. The fair catch is made, but it's close. Loose ball over there, and it's New Mexico's ball. Matt DeBach was the receiver who slid down as the ball came in, and New Mexico came out of the pack with it. Someone in the pile. Interestingly enough, both DeBach and Kobe Mansell are from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 37-yard punt, Butler. and the fumble gives New Mexico the good field position. And there's Charles Butler just waiting. Wonderful job by Charles to give to Buck that, that yard that he needs and then be ready to pounce on the fumble. Big break for the Lobos. Let's see if they can capitalize on it with two minutes and 56 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. He had a brief look there at Butler, number nine, sitting on the bench. Eric Young is the lone setback for New Mexico. Puts that bottom of your screen, pass across the middle. That's Gavin Perlman. It's a foot race. Thomas trying to track him down and does finally at the six. A quick little look-in pass against man-to-man -man coverage. Coach Francioni says it's going to be difficult to get the ball to the tight end today because of that kind of man-to-man -man coverage. But when you have a speedster like Gavin Perlman, that's what can happen. The third catch of Perlman's career is first this season, 43 yards, protecting the ball as he goes out of bounds at the six. Kid's quicker than a nasty thought, and he just spun it right up to the middle. A little quick look-in pattern. Case faked the give to his uh, running back and just reared up and hit him with a perfect pass. Yep, Chris Griffin in now, two tight end set for New Mexico. They'll try to power this in. DeYoung fumbled the last time he had it. Not this time! Touchdown, New Mexico, Eric Young. Young with his third touchdown as a Lobo. How about that for a comeback by that young man, the senior out of Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Gets the hug from Ryan Mummert, the big 6'3", 300-pounder from Tribuca Canyon, California. And let's give some credit to the fullback, too, Chris Shelton leading the way. Great block right there. That was. Nathan Vale on to add the extra point to try to make it a 10-0 ball game. 
Stoney Case is the holder. The kick is booted through, and the Lobos have struggled a little bit, but here they are, up 10 to nothing with 2.44 to go. And, and I guess you have to, in large part, credit the defense for the job they're doing and the special team for creating a turnover. Well, Charles Butler made an absolutely sensational play as we take a look at the touchdown again. Watch Shelton with the block right there. You know, you don't need a great block, just enough to occupy that line. And look at Chris Griffin's block there. On Zach Thomas, the All-American candidate out of Pampa, Texas. Griffin just moved him right back about five yards, and Young cut to the right, six points. A two-play, 51-yard drive, took all of 12 seconds. Eric Young going the final six yards of that long pass to Gavin Perlman was what set it up. Well, Eric Young is, a, is an interesting story. Here's a young man two seasons ago, almost quit. The coaching staff wanted him to run some extra uh, laps, some extra running because they didn't think he was doing the job. Was walking off the field, and you may have heard this story, but his teammates, his fellow uh, running backs and the linemen came up to him, encouraged him to stay. He stayed, redshirted last year, and has a totally new attitude about Lobo football. He has been wonderful for the coaching staff the last year. Second time, the ball blows off the tee. Matt DeBuck is back there along with number six for Texas Tech, who has been back there several times. That's Stacy Mitchell. Well, those special teams have been much improved over the last season and a half. And let's see if Texas Tech can run this one back. And the third kickoff goes to Mitchell deep in the end zone, and he'll have nothing to do with that. Vail three for three on kickoffs. That's the first one he hasn't kicked out of the end zone. Well, let's see if Tony Darden is the guy at quarterback one more time. Texas Tech, he hasn't done much on offense. And we have a new quarterback, Semi Lethbridge, coming in now. Lethbridge is out of Lubbock. He's a redshirt freshman. In high school, he threw for 3,400 yards and 42 touchdowns. Remember the National Honor Society? Great athlete, good basketball player. Lethbridge rolls out, sings it in, and it's caught. Mitchell, isn't it? Out near the 30-yard line. That time, number 19 was Nasser. there. Hey, yeah, he's Nasser. a freshman, freshman, and didn't really expect him to play much, or maybe on special teams, but Nasser Ayad is in there with the catch. Spike Dykes deciding to wait today to name a starting quarterback, and that is real risky because you could get into a situation where teammates uh, start to choose sides and, and don't back the one guy. He doesn't think he'll have that problem. And off. Up the middle. Crane into the secondary before Trent Coy brings him down. First down, first down Red Raiders. Coy did a great job of avoiding a blocker that time to make what could have been a touchdown-saving tackle. Little off tackle play, good blocking at the line of scrimmage. And watch uh, Art Celestine come up as well to help out Trent Coit here. But those wide receivers for Tech are doing a wonderful job blocking up field like that because the corners are making the tackles six, seven, uh, eight yards downfield. Lobos have been giving up big chunks of yardage, but they've gotten tough when they had to. Back to pass, cross the middle, it's complete. Balls loose. And then loose. Now let's see if they call it a fumble or an incomplete pass. Now that was Malcolm McKenzie. And let's see what they say. The officials are huddled together. And now they're asking the tech team to, to stand back. And there's McKenzie, has it, and then loses it. And that's an extremely difficult call that should be made right away. Instead, the conference goes to New Mexico. Watch, well, see what you think. He's got it. He's got it. It's loose. Blake Irwin separated him from the ball. And then it may have been Charles Butler again. Butler or Irwin who fell on it. It's one of those bang-bang calls that... Uh, but a correct call. I think probably. Well, another break for New Mexico. 1.32 to go. First quarter, and the Lobos up 10 to nothing. Eric Young is still in. Oliver, we're told, has a sprained right foot and is questionable. 
That's the word now as we take a look at Stony Case. Makes it. Plenty of time. Sips it in. And a wonderful catch by Perlman. As good a catch as you'll see anywhere, anytime. Here's a guy that's not very big, but what a heart. He just eight, shot through the air. 157 pounds, and the ball was perfect. Could not have thrown it anywhere else and been caught. Well, Bart Thomas came over to try to do something about it, but couldn't. He reminded me a little bit of Carl Winston there, the way he extended perpendicular. Quick pitch, got it back. Young gets it, and now should just fall. was hit just as he tried to get rid of the ball and away it went. William Ritter was the man that hit him along with Tony Daniels. That's a 19-yard loss all the way back to the 49. And this is where maybe Eric should have just slid on down. Ended up losing 7, 8, maybe 10 yards extra. That brings up second and 29. Second and train ride. Swing out to Young. Block was missed on the far side, and that allowed Damon Whitware to devour Young. Whitware's next defensive end has been moved to defensive tackle this year. Well, not only that, he kept putting on weight. In fact, he, he put on 20, 20 pounds over the summer. 280 pounder now. Well, the Lobos have called a timeout. Third and 30 with 19 seconds to go in the first half. Good timeout because they still have the wind to their back, and it's a pretty strong wind here in the first quarter. Dennis Franchoni talking to Case. Franchoni in his third year at New Mexico. His record is 9-13. and 13. And to an outsider, that may not sound very impressive, but to folks that know this program and where it was, those are wonderful numbers. Not as good as those numbers, though. No. I mean, that, that has shown what he has done during his career. Now the wide receivers and the tight ends over to talk to Coach Fran. 28, Zach Russell. Everyone's Chris Griffin. Manley Woods, 83. Now Shelton, 38, coming in to talk. It's Tony Keyes off to the right of your screen. Hello, Perlman, be, number one. It'll be interesting to see what they decide to do under a third and 30 situation here. How many third and 30 plays do you have in the book? Well, you hope you don't need too many. I think is what they'll do. They will throw it long, and if it's incomplete, then they'll then they'll punt. That'll stop the clock. We go on the third and thirty at the fifty. Manley Woods in motion. He's rolling to his left. Has a little room now. Gets rid of it. Intercepted for Texas Tech. That's Robert Johnson. Well, that's the one thing you didn't want to do. Johnson with the pick. Stoney Case short on his pass. I don't know if he saw him in the zone. That's twice. Case has thrown it into coverage now, and the second time he gets burned. 11 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Robert Johnson, a sophomore, had one interception last year. Just underthrown. I think Stoney saw him. Trying to get it to Wesley. Yeah. Turnover starting to even up a little bit now. And it's uh, Lethridge with the fake down the middle. And is it complete or intercepted? And it is intercepted by New Mexico's Art Celestine. Celestine came over and out muscled the receiver for Texas Tech, Great Scott Ayler. Great job by Celestine. Whoa. Watch this. Actually, number 19 for Texas Tech. That's the freshman again, Nasser Ayad. And it could have gone either way at that point. But Celestine had more leverage, I guess. Wow, what a great they ripped play. it out of there. Art Celestine from Riverside, California. Made only six tackles. Here's again a, a guy whose dad led the Marines in the Persian Gulf War and showed just how tough he was there. Texas. 
Texas Tech. That was Marcus Coleman. Yeah. And then number 12, along with number 23, uh, Thomas, Cat Adams. And Martin Thomas also is there. Cat Adams, 22. And Eric Young looks back to the huddle. That is the end of the first quarter of play. We will be back with the rest of the first half in just a moment with the Lobos leading at 10-0. Bus loads of Lobo fans made the drive down the interstate to Seven. Lubbock. Seven buses or people? Bus loads, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, they're happy with the score, 10-0. It's the Lobos over Texas Tech. It's second down and eight for New Mexico at the 37. Winslow Oliver, you see him there with the injured foot. And judging by it, I don't think he'll be back. Zach Thomas making that stop. Thomas, the heart and soul of this defense for Texas Tech. They call him a Tommy Nobis type linebacker. Six foot, 232 pounder out of Tampa. Here's a guy with a 3.5 grade point average. He was fourth last year in the Southwest Conference in tackles. Yeah, getting back to Winslow Oliver, boy, that sure makes you sad. The kid worked so hard during the offseason, and I hope his injury is unrelated to what he had last year, which was kind of a muscle pull in the foot of ligament pull, which was uh, yeah, top of the Pace batted in the air, and uh, no one can get to it, which is a break for New Mexico. Byron Wright got his mitts on it. Wright out of Wichita Falls is a senior. They had 42 tackles last year. Including eight tackles against Oklahoma in the ball game in the bowl game last year. Now Texas Tech has done a wonderful job scouting New Mexico because every time Case has rolled out, he's had somebody there in his face. I think if Case is going to run that play, they got to leave the fullback in, Sean or somebody in to block that guy. They try that naked reverse, and uh, they've spotted it every time. Marbles getting ready for their second punt now. Texas have great field position. A lot of contact made after after the punt, but no whistle. Mantle has a great leg, but he's very inconsistent. This is what uh, that, that'll do it to you right there when you uh, fumble when you fumble the snap. He dropped it too low. Man, I don't know how they yeah, call right. You don't call that. He wasn't blocked into it. And the ball was not touched. Was he, could, he, he could use Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman after that. <laughs> and that was a quick look at tonight's program schedule on Q13 to Channel 10. Across the middle, the ball is caught. Complete first down, down to the 25-yard line. Scoble with the reception. This is the one thing the Lobos were worried about, the defensive backfield. They've been outstanding in spring ball. They've been outstanding in practice. But Scoville just broke free on that little in turn-in pattern and beat Celestine to the ball. That's important that the Lobo front line puts a little pressure on that. You're right. They have not done that yet. And Spard with the ball, the handoff, off tackle, nice game. Aaron Sharper makes the stop. Texas Tech offense starting to feel pretty good about things right now. Blake Irwin also in there. The gunman trying to get some shots on offense going. Texas Tech now with the wind advantage for the rest of the half. Slung up to the line, and they've kind of abandoned that quick offensive sport that they were trying to do. Oh, fumble, the ball's loose. Celestine with the hit, and New Mexico with the ball. Falls on it, and what a hit by Art Celestine! That kid may never play again. He may call his mother and say, "Mom, you were right about med school." Oh, of course he never had. Oh, he really didn't. He had lost the ball before that. He obviously, I think, saw Celestine coming. Oh, Whoa, yeah, that uh, that career as an insurance man looks real good after that. Uh, Tech has been plagued by turnovers. They get it inside the red zone it's and pop right? it up. It's their third turnover, I believe. Well, I think if... Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think. Is that what it is? No, the, the fourth, two fourth. interceptions, right. and the uh, fumbled punt. Middle, handoff. Almost hang on. Eric Young drags a couple of tacklers with him. 
Looking to look at the blocking that time by number 53, Matt Tyner, the redshirt freshman out of Edgewood, Texas, who was right down there with him. Great downfield blocking by Tyner. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Franchoni decides to maybe let that offensive line do some work here to kind of settle things down. Uh, Love was a little bit flustered with their passing attack last few times. I don't think Stoney Case is going to be too happy about his performance so far, but Stoney is the kind of guy that can turn that around in a minute. to the first down. Sean Banks, number 49, is there, along with Robert Johnson. And Mark Thomas also in there. There's a look at Gavin Perlman coming back to the huddle. It looks like they'll call a timeout and measure. Tell you, you can't believe how small Perlman is until you stand ne next to him in practice or down in the field or something, and he looks like your sixth grade son. I mean, this guy is tiny. But boy, is he quick. They say he's their best blocking receiver. He has such wonderful technique, too, when he runs his patterns. I tell you, he is faster than you can spend 10 bucks on a, on a beautiful girl. I tell you what, he just, he is so quick. How, how, fa how fast? The, as fast as you can spend, right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Played a couple of years at uh, Kenyon College in Ohio before he came to New Mexico and walked on last year. Had just two catches last season, uh, backing up that terrific uh, front three for New Mexico. But they had a lot of faith that he was going to be able to come in and do the job. St. Pius High School grad. Up the middle, Young. And the offensive line does the job that time, and they should have the first down. This is where you're talking. We haven't called Abe Ghoston's name yet. Uh, the former running back for the Lobos with back problems is now filling in a wide receiver for New Mexico. And they think he's going to do a nice job there, too. The other side of that size equation is where Gavin uh, Perlman is 5'8", 157, with pads on, I think. The other side of that is the big right guard, Calvin Allen, who's 6'7", 363. They'd love to have him lose maybe 20 more pounds because then they really think he could be a force on the line. At least he's in there right now. Okay. Okay. He's been trouble. Richard and goes down to the backfield. And they have that play scouted. That rollout is, has just been smelled out every time by Tech. Tony Daniels does it this time. Sophomore out of Odessa. He's not getting backside blocking, and that's why I think he needs to have the fullback in there. I, I wouldn't be surprised what the Lobos go to that two-back offense with the, the fullback, put Shelton back in there and let him block. I think with Winslow Oliver out of there, I think Tech is not looking for the running back quite as much and maybe focusing a little bit more on Case. Swing pass over to Young, and an outstanding tackle on the far side by Cole. Defensive play by Marcus Coleman. Young had a blocker, tried to get to the outside, and, and Coleman just played off the blocker and made, and made the tackle. Coleman with that Darth Vader look there, and uh, he's kind of played that role today. He's really been a thorn in New Mexico side. Outstanding athlete. Big third down play. Third down in the bus ride here. It's about 15. <laughs> Mexico only one of six on third down. Sloan is the tight end, just two wide receivers. They're coming after Case, downfield, and he throws it away. That time he was looking for Zach Wesley, but outstanding coverage that time by Cat Adams in Texas Tech. And Chris Adams out of Henderson, Texas. Had four interceptions a year ago, two interceptions in the spring game. Big round of applause for the Red Raider defense here at Jones Stadium. Fran says, no, that's not the play I wanted. Tony says, well, it's not the one I wanted either. You know, Case's numbers don't look that bad. Six of 10, 89 yards, but that one interception. But you're right, it is not a Stony Case-type game. You have that one big play to throw. That the buck is back one more time, ready to receive the punt. and Sharper is always the first man down the field. 35 yards on the kick, no return. We'll take a break with
with 10.27 to go. First half, New Mexico leads 10-0. Both teams. Quick snap up the middle, and Crane is hit right away. Maybe a gain of one. Creighton Solomon under there, along with Carroll, a couple of close friends who are very tough up the middle. Creighton Solomon, six foot, 344 pound sophomore out of El Reno, Oklahoma. Another outstanding prospect here on this Lobo team. One of the young players who's got a couple of real big years ahead of him. John Wingate also in their number 95. He has a, a bad toe as well, but healthy enough to play. This is Sebi again. And throws that one away. Phil Scoble was in the same county, but that was about it. And we can get an idea of what they're dealing with down on the field. It is a brisk win up there. We don't have it exactly how much it is but that's the only thing that makes it bearable here today because it would be very very hot wide open skies here in Lubbock hardly a cloud and it would be absolutely boiling down on that field if it wasn't for this win big third down play here third down and nine Crane is the running back left bridge the quarterback pretty good numbers for the young man Late to Scoville and that'll be just shy of the first down Trent Coit there Celestine there Along with Chris Carroll again. And uh, now the Red Raiders will have to punt it away. Wise decision, I think. They've got the wind to their back, chance to pin the Lobos deep. 10 Sharper back again for New Mexico. And once again, Cade will get ready to punt it away. No pressure. This time, again, very high, and it just took off. And they'll let it drop. Tip back, and they're going to say it'll be down at the one foot line. Now, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. Now they'll say it's a touchback. And now they threw a flag. I think one of the Red Raiders questioned the parenthood of one of the officials. And maybe it was Marcus Coleman in there with the gripe. have to wait and see what the officials come up with as far as where they'll spot the ball. The Red Raiders have played the Lobos absolutely even here except for mistakes. Personal foul. Yeah. So instead of being down at the one foot line as we take a look at it. Oh, good call by the official. Yeah. Coleman is clearly standing on the end line. for the Lobos as uh, they will start in excellent field position as Spike Dykes gets the explanation now. Well, when we come back, perhaps we'll see why there was a 15-yard penalty call. 8.57 to go first half. Lobos up. Here's the reason for the sportsman-like penalty. Watch number 45 with the ball, Ryan Donahue, disgustedly throwing it to the official and the official throws the flag, and, you know, that's maybe a little bit picky. Football players who injure officials today on Donahue. 10-0 <laughs> our score, New Mexico over Texas Tech. Tech with seven penalties for 50 yards. Bubbles with only a couple of them, but those were both were pass interference calls. And Eric Young getting a lot more playing time than he had figured on today. Oliver still on the bench. To the far sideline. Good move by Zach Wesley. It's a sprint, and he's brought out of bounds by Coleman. And Wesley with some excellent speed, perhaps the fastest player uh, wide out for New Mexico. Is he faster than Perlman? I think he is, yes. Perlman may be quicker, but overall speed. Yes. Look at that Great move. move. Wow. <laughs> you saw who he left in the dust there, Verone McKinley. Lobos now with the ball. At the 43, first and 10 from there. 27-yard play gives the Lobos good field position. Young again, handoff up the middle. Inside the 40 now. And good second effort. Drop, finally driven back. McKinley there. 
along with Robert Johnson, number seven, and then Sean Banks. You know, Sean Banks is one of those players that they say can be dominating, but we haven't seen that much of him today. We should mention, too, that uh, Texas Tech has had a couple of players suspended for the season for academics, a couple of defensive starters, Stephen Gaines and du uh, Dwayne Bryant, and that has hurt their effort. Here's the option. No case goes back. Down the middle. Throw it there. Wait for the signal. There it is. Touchdown, New Mexico. Great fake by Stoney Case. And he he uh, st uh, brought that play on himself because he saw that the cornerback had come up. He knew Perlman was in single coverage. Dropped back on his own that time. Watch what happens here as the cornerback comes up to stop the option. And there goes Case. Well, it took a long time for the official to be sure of the call. Waited to see if Perlman held on. Oh, wonderful, wonderful play. Still looking, still looking. And finally, he makes the call, and Gavin Perlman has his first touchdown as a Lobo. 39 yards, three receptions now, 109 yards for Gavin Perlman. The extra point is added, and New Mexico now leads it. 17 to nothing in front of a stunned house in Lubbock. I started the show by telling you that Gavin Perlman was smaller than my bank account. It's gotten a lot bigger here in the last uh, hour or so. We'll be back with more from Lubbock. In a 17 Texas, first half of five, 52 seconds. And completing it was Case to Perlman. The two touchdown drives and 52 seconds for New Mexico. Last year, Gavin Perlman had for 20 yards. Today, he's got three receptions for 109 yards. And one. Third time, the ball rolled to the for Nathan Vale. Stacy Mitchell and Buck are back. Leading the kick, and this will be Vale's first chance to kick into the win. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. Seems to be pretty much everywhere these days. Sharper is really starter at strong safety in the secondary season, nine games, had just four starts. He tackles. Came to UNM as a wide receiver, uh, redshirted that first season, and then uh, the most offensive back. Same high school. Draft choice of the Dallas Cowboys a year ago. Lethbridge still in the court. His running back, his hand sparred. Short pass, wide open to Scoville. Brought down Billy Austin. Get 40. Richard freshman out of Texas, out of Houston, Texas. Lobos in the secondary are playing pretty soft, and wait, I think. Wait, wait, I, I, I think consider. I don't think they're quite if so get more deep. This will pass uh, well that time by Lethbridge. Looking for Scoville again. Lethbridge, who had in basketball, he averaged 23 points a game. Well, according to one magazine, Texas Tech is off a schedule entry with uh, coming in and then Oklahoma. The Lobo's much improved. And then they get into their Southwest Conference. I guess I, that would be the case. There's a guy in Lethbridge also hit 347 in baseball at, here in Lubbock. Bo Adams is in our way. Now they'll run the option. Spark some room and driven out short of the first round from the safety spot to bring him down. Best offensive. Well blocked. By Zebby Le Clock stopped. Go. Tech down. 17 nothing. The tight end comes back in. This catches last. Down. Doesn't been really used. The pitch back. The freshman has more running room. Breaking through his hands. Down to the 25. The 
Four sharper brings it. Excellent effort by Anspard, but quite frankly, poor tackle. Who had him stop the game and just up. Take a check of Billy Austin, too, helping out number But let's take a look. Chris Carroll ran him. Coit had his hand. Ball at the 26. Six three. He did a great. Play. Same ball will be spotted at the eight, a gain of three. Second down from there. Ball at the. Eight. And Spart again, and the cornerback Sharper. Johnson also there, and Sharper has really proven to be a big. Here when they've had to play here, but I tell you what, those last two defensive plays are excellent. Third down and a long three. Yeah, they can get a first down now. Sharper came up to jar that ball loose. And my goodness, Lisker had the ball for New Mexico. It'll bring up, it'll bring up a fourth down. Let's take a look, Ted. Was he down? Still driving, still driving. No. And no, that was Bad number call. 39, Blake Irwin, that made the hit. I, unless, unless they stopped his forward progress, unless they called that, but he was not down. Texas Tech has called the timeout to discuss what they will do on fourth and one. Charles Butler talking with Coach Dennis Francioni. Watch it again. See if see if you think his forward progress was stopped. This is number three, Alton Crane. Sharper hits it initially. And there's Irwin. I, yeah, you know what? I think close. it was stopped. His forward progress was stopped. Right there. That angle, I don't know, Mike. Well, let, me, let me ask our director if we can do this. Can we see that at regular speed? And sometimes you get a better feel for it uh, than in, in slow motion. So, so we'll see if we can see that at regular speed as the Lobos come back out onto the field to get ready uh, for a fourth down and one at the, at the three. Now, They're going to go for it here. That's a close call. See, there it? it looks like his forward progress has stopped. Watch it here in real time. Here comes, here comes Texas Tech. Fourth down. The pitch in the end down. zone. No, let's see. Yes, they're going to say touchdown. Into the corner. Alton Crane with the TD. And Texas Tech gets on the board with 5-10 to go first half. Well, the officials were right on the play. And you can see what a difficult job they had as you watch the touchdown again because one angle looked like his forward progress had stopped. The other angle looked like it had. So we'll let the officials make the call, and they clearly made it. Celestine couldn't quite get there on the corner. Alton Crane goes in, and Texas Tech will try to kick the two-point conversion, or rather the uh, conversion here. Red Raiders right back in. Bring the Raiders within 10. And it will not. It is blocked. John Davis's kick is blocked up front. Damon Burris 
Big number 75. It's not the first time Damon has done that. 6'4", 317 pounder. Now this is the season over for New Mexico. It really doesn't get much easier. At home next weekend to Texas Christian. And it's on the road uh, to the uh, into Dallas with SMU there. That game we will have for you via Raycom. So we will have the Lobo at SMU game. Then it's on to BYU, at home to Colorado State, and then the trip we all hate to make to Hawaii, and then it's back home to San Diego State. As of right now, we are planning on doing that BYU game. It could be picked up as a national game. And it's at New Mexico State, Fresno State, a tough road swing right there. Home to Utah, Wyoming. Good to be in Utah, home to sure. It is. This time it'll be out. 17-6, New Mexico on top of Texas Tech. 5-10 left to play here in the first half. So look at the scoring drive. Alton Crane, the key player in it. Best offensive performance of the Red Raiders so far this afternoon. As we talk, Mike, you don't want to let those young kids get their confidence go up. Well, we only had to do six push-ups that time. So. And again, John Davis will try to kick it off. They may have to have somebody hold it, and that's exactly what they'll do. Thomas is coming up. So a Texas State flag over Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. I would say 20 to 25 miles an hour. It's blowing good, and it's swirling down there. It's not just high up. It's definitely down in the field affecting things. A look at uh, the temperature gauge. It looks to be a shade under 100 degrees down on the field, and it's significantly different down there on that artificial turf. Squib kick picked up by Zach Wesley out to the 20 and down at about the 28 yard line. That's where Stony Case in New Mexico will take over from there. Here's something else to watch out for when they start the second half, Mike. They've got, a, uh, the Lobos do have an excellent kick return team. They've got each lane marked off for guys to block. They, this is something else they practice every day during drills. You watch if they get a good kick. Now you can't do it on a script kick like that, but a good high kick. Watch for a run back by Zach Wesley. The numbers for Stoney and it improved considerably thanks to that last drive and that long touchdown pass to Gavin Perlman. Lobos looking to start the season with a victory. Quick pass goes to Abe Gostin and a gain of about three. Sean Banks quickly got over there to make the tackle. And that might be what Stoney has to do to get this man-to-man uh, -man defense loosened up a little bit. They'd like to get it to David Sloan, their big six foot seven inch, 250 pound tight end. They just can't break him free off the line of scrimmage. Well, I don't think they've gone to a tight end yet today. He's being held up on every play. Clock winding down in the first half, 434. Here's the handoff. This time it is to Cleveland Smith. Hit at about the line of scrimmage and sneaks through out to the 35. A gain of two. Tony Daniels was there. That will bring up third and four. Lobo struggled on uh, third down conversions earlier in the game. Ghostin goes out, and they've got two tight ends in there now as Chris Griffin brings the play in from the sideline. Cleveland Smith, the lone setback. Two wide outs. And Smith, and he is hammered. Maybe back to the line, not even close to the line. And that will bring up fourth down for the Lobos. Tony Daniels, who is uh, penciled in as a second string defensive end today, has really had a great first half. Let's see what penalty oh, there was a penalty. penalty. My goodness. Yeah. They were all sides. Now, if you take the play. <laughs> oh, yeah. leave, leave it on, will you? I want to hear what you're going to say. <laughs> I, think, I think we'll take the penalty. I would think so. I don't think there should be much discussion. And by our estimate, that should be a first down. Jabbar Thomas that apparently snuck over the line. And that's a nice break for New Mexico, a chance to run some time off the clock. It is a 
first down, ball at the 40. Yeah, I don't think the Lobos wanted to give uh, Texas Tech another shot at the offense here with the wind of their back. With four minutes left to play in the first half. Eight penalties for Texas Tech. Not a lot of yardage, but the thing will come at some crucial times. Three, maybe four at that point. Alex Crowder with a lead block. Yeah, there's, there's some tough hitting down there in that line. Damon Wickware, 6'3, 280. Javar Thomas, 6'4, 250. Chris Ory, 6'2, 264. And Byron Wright, 6'4, 245. Yes, the Lobos have a big, big offensive line, but I'll tell you what, there are no slouches over there in those black uniforms either. Get bigger every year, it seems, doesn't it? Oh, Second and six. Play clock down to seven. Here comes Case being pressured. Goes down the pocket and goes down. Sean Banks with the sack. Banks, the junior out of Dallas, has had 18 starts as a Red Raider. 108 tackles last year. Now Banks got around the block by Ryan Mummert. Lumbered is big at 6'3", 300, and Banks was just out quicked him. 218, 217 and counting. Let's look the Lobos throw here, and they decide to take time off the clock. I say they take time off the clock. That's what they do. Mike Young goes down. Ball is loose. And it looked like he was down, but let's see. Yes, he was. Let's see. The head referee there, Sean Banks, he can made the stop. You can hear the Red Raider fans what they think about. They thought their guy was down back in the first quarter. Let's see if we can see. Ball. Oh, it looked like it was out. Looked like the ball was out. And Whoops. perhaps a break for the Lobos. And the clock continues to run. 1.45 left to play here in the first half. Texas Tech with two timeouts left. A little bit surprised that maybe they didn't take one right there. Cody Mansell, the punt. Very much taking their time. Six seconds, five on the play clock. And Coverly gets the snap off. And it's nearly blocked. And this Great. one bounces back toward the 20 and will be down at about the 16-yard line. So a, a nice again, roll for Mansell. It looked like Mansell got nailed just as he Huge pressure and watch it here. Good concentration. And that's Marcus Coleman again. Now tell me he didn't hit his legs. legs. My goodness, that's Mansell's gonna be a little bit gun shy before this is all over. I'll tell you what, that's twice he's been hit, no call. Excellent 46-yard kick by Mansell under pressure. Prevent defense by the Lobos. Ball up to 16. Quick pass. It's complete out to Adams. Austin Thomas with the start. And Tech will hustle back to the line of scrimmage. That's the uh, environmental enhancer that sprays water on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. You know how much that cost, Mike? No. $10,000 for that. Why well, can't they hire a guy to That's spray what I thought. And Get a trainer, right? Back to the action. Pass is complete to Skolo. Looks like uh, good enough for the first down. And they kept him in bounds. And the clock stops momentarily at 42 seconds while they move the chains. Lobos will give them that play all afternoon. And still waiting for the clock to get restarted. Ball is ready, and now they'll start. And Lethbridge still in there at quarterback. Terrence Sharper came up and, and gave Scoville a good hit. And Terrence needs to be, he's the most aggressive defensive back, but you got to be careful you don't get yourself a personal foul in a situation like that. Just wanted to welcome Field to college football. He's a senior high school All-American. Davey O'Brien winner, huh? Well, doesn't mean much here at college level. Three wide receivers. Bass is in there. No tight ends at the moment. Try to pass it again, and again it is Scoville. Let's see if he does. He does. Good job. With 
five seconds left. Rod Coverly over there, and of course, he's the twin brother of Dan for New Mexico, Art Celestine, also the corner on that side was there. Now well, Lobos six and five last season, their first winning season since 1982, and they're trying for their first back-to-back -back winning seasons in 23 years. Have to go back to 70 and 71 for that. Lobos had had some second stringers in there on the defensive line. Now the first string guys back in. Down four. Lots of time across the middle. It is complete to Sheldon Bass. Carroll there to make the stop along with Johnson, but not before Texas Tech. He's a former basketball player to jump up and knock. That field goal will end the first half of play. Texas Tech with a little momentum as we head toward the break. Take a look at it one more time. Got up in the wind. The Lobos 17. to Windy Lubbock, where New Mexico leads Texas Tech 17-9, trying to end a four-game losing streak against the Red Raiders. Lobos back on the field, excuse me, Ted, along with Texas Tech. And the Mayors, of course, got into the act. It's just not a battle of the football teams. Uh, the Mayors' challenge, uh, Mark Chavez of, of Albuquerque, is offering a bushel of green chilies to the mayor of Lubbock if for some chance Texas Tech wins today in exchange um, Martin Chavez will end up with some West Texas Cap Rock wine. I'll take the chilies any day. Okay. <laughs> We're about ready to start the second half of play here as we told you just before the break. The Lobos have scored 10 points off turnovers. That's the difference in this ball game. Now the Lobos have to manufacture something themselves. They've done one on their own. An outstanding stony case to Gavin Perlman touchdown pass. But other than that, it's been Red Raider mistakes that have made the difference in this ball game. Red Raiders had what Spike Dykes called the, calls their best recruiting class in years. And we're starting to see that already with some of those young faces, especially the, the skill players getting plenty of playing time, a true freshman. Kids saying baseball is life. Well, football is life here in Texas. Believe me, if you've ever spent much time in Texas, Football is definitely life. Mobile fans in a bus down here. Stacy Mitchell getting ready to receive the opening kickoff and in look the at second this. half. The uh, Lobos have decided they yeah. want the wind in the fourth quarter. Matt DeBuck also back there. Season openers for New Mexico. Pretty good at home for the advantage, but the road openers uh, not so good at 9, 19, and 1. An eight-point lead at halftime for the New Mexico Lobos. Lobos are trying to win their first non-conference road game outside of the state of New Mexico since 1986. They are 0-11 in a couple of wins down in Las Cruces, the only thing uh, that has really broken that up at all. And now we are told that uh, Winslow Oliver has two dislocated toes. Oh, is that, that is painful. You don't think so. You kind of laugh at a toe injury. Oh, that's painful. Well, Nathan Vale getting ready to kick off into the wind it will be a short kick taken at about the 16 that's the buck coming around and the buck stops at the 30. pretty good coverage considering the kick was so short as scott mcgarrahan out of arlington texas kid they really like a defensive back here makes this special team stop no he, they do think he's going to, going to be a great one at safety for the team and, uh, you know, the coaches love to get on those young guys. They have a, think they're going to have a great future. And I think McGarrahan sometimes <laughs> wonders if he's getting picked on. Lobo defense has to reestablish itself right here. That's Tony Darden, the quarterback, not Lethbridge. And the pass is dropped. Coming out is Adams, who had it and dropped it. Not a good start for Tech. Here are the starting lineups now, these skill players for Texas Tech. Crane is the eye back, Walker the fullback, Adam Scoville and Ayler are the wide receivers, or the receivers, Ayler at tight end. And the offensive line has done a nice job protecting their quarterbacks today. Hoffman, Jones, Fitzgerald, Rivera, and Wood. Jared Feebiger has come in at one of the tight end slots now for Tech. Second and 10 at the 30. Very important for the Lobos to reestablish some defensive superiority they had in the first quarter right here. Good block that time by pick number 75.
by Ben Kaufman, 6'5", 286-pound offensive tackle. And Trent Coyne in on the stop there. Billingsley, Lisker, and Burrust will get the initial start for New Mexico up front. Coverly, Irwan in on that last stop, too, along with Johnson and Thomas. The LBs and the DBs, Celestine, Butler, Sharper, and Coit. Scott Ehler, a tight end, has brought the play, play in from the sidelines. Third down, five at the 35. The pitch. Celestine Johnson, and it does go against Texas Tech. It is holding against Texas Tech. Well, Tech has had a lot of penalties, but most of them have been of the offsides or not, not only starts. Not only was that holding, the, he, he held his helmet and pulled his helmet off. And let's take a listen now as we hear the call from Doyle Jackson. Foul was holding, but the offense still third down. Except third and five, it's now third and 15. The problem there, though, is you see the weakness of the Lobo linebackers and the defensive ends letting people get outside of them. Huge hole that time on the right side of the Lobo defense. Pass at the bottom of your screen. You see Celestine up on him. Back to pass. No loss the middle. A tipped and nearly intercepted, except that Daniel Johnson tipped it. Todd Walker came out of the backfield and was the intended receiver. Good zone coverage that time by the Lobos as Johnson simply drops back into the zone. You know, if Daniel right had stayed where he was, he saw the eyes of the quarterback kind of shifted to his right a little bit, and the ball came back to his left, but a nice job by Daniel Johnson. Again, he's from here in Lubbock. And the defense did the job on the first series. That's tough with the wind swirling around like that. Lobos will take over at the 20. The 21 make that one. We return, leading 17-9. Lobo football is brought to you by your local Jeep and e Brad Cade's 50. Let's push the low back. For New Mexico, 17-0 lead for the first time in the second half. And this is the offensive line that has to establish itself. Defensive line did a great job in their first. Now let's see if the offense. In case. Back out, Ryan Mummer in front of. Here this afternoon at Stadium. I think it's kind of oh, Mexico. Start with Oliver. The front for New Mexico. Smith. Smith gets it 94. No, that was Shelton under there. Shelton. And you was conservative to come out and ask for Manly Woods come keep your screen just out of picture now. Shelton again. Hands off. Right. Ball himself is hit. close. And Stoney really took coming off that separated shoulder you remember in wow not having that moment in his head and first it is down. A first down New Mexico official said he was down 32 yard line first and 10 from there 
setback. He has the ball off. Hit hard back there by Zach Thomas. Now you can see they call him a Tommy Novus lookalike, and he did it that time. Ritter, Ori, Rick Warren, Wright, the front four for the Red Raiders. And there's Thomas right up the middle. Just a perfect middle linebacker, has those great instincts. And the secondary, I guess we could say, led by Coleman the way he's played today. Zach Thomas had 117 tackles last year, 64 of them unassisted. Loss of one yard. Young with 11 carries now, 32 yards in the afternoon. I don't think there's any question the absence of Winslow Oliver has really hurt the running game. Who was injured on his very first... in the afternoon for that guy. And easily could have been his third. Perlman was the intended receiver there. It was thrown a little bit behind him, and that was it. Zach Thomas with the touchdown. 35-yard interception return, and now Tech will go for two. Remember, they had one extra point blocked. 15 consecutive points for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And we all said at the beginning of this game, the Lobos were expected to jump out early. Now they got to hold on because they've let the Red Raiders right back into it. And it's just a two-point conversion away from a tie. They will go for two. Here you look at it from the end zone now. Tony Darden is the quarterback. They'll try to pass for it. A little pressure wide open. Two-point conversion. Todd Walker, the fullback. And we have a tie ball game in Lubbock. Well, we'll take a break now and see if the Lobos can regroup. 17-0 lead is now gone. We're remodeling Westside, expanding our 13-acre facility to serve you better. Here's the problem. The cars are in the way. So right an example of a perfect linebacker read. Only his second interception as a Red Raider, but he made this one count for a touchdown. Drops back, steps in front of the receiver, and there he is, wide open. Ah, only about two points for the gymnastics, but six points for the touchdown. Zach Thomas, the inspirational leader for the Red Raiders, with the touchdown to tie this one up. 3.5 grade point average. Now you know why he was fourth in the Southwest Conference last year in tackle. Outstanding middle linebacker. Maybe a little small to play the position in the pros. That's what they said about a certain guy from Baylor who played for a few years with the Chicago Bears. Keep that name Singletary who was exactly the same size as Zach Thomas, actually a little smaller than Thomas now. Well, John Davis will try again. A teammate will hold the ball. Steve Pagador is back deep for the Lobos, along with Manly Woods now. The kick will be taken by Woods, actually taken by no one. And now the Lobos will take it at the 20. And let's see how Stony Case reacts to that last interception. I can't remember a game last year where Stoney had two interceptions. It had plagued him earlier in his career, but he had really cut them down. And I heard Dennis Francioni talk on his coach's show earlier this week about how that's the one thing that Stoney didn't do anymore, was force the ball. And I'm not sure he forced that one. I just think he underthrew it, threw it behind the receiver. I think he had two against Colorado State last year. like they want to run the ball and kind of get it back together. And not much doing there. Damon Wickware brings down Eric Young. Defense is really improved for the Red Raiders. The offense still not that real crisp, sharp blocking at the line of scrimmage as Case gets the play from the sidelines. 
waiting for him to bring that in. It the two like tight ends go out and then two new wide receivers in. And Miles At Atkins comes in, the Albuquerque kid. Albuquerque High School, and I think this may be his first play of the season. He's a walk on. Abe goes to the motion. Second and seven. Up the middle again is Young. Pretty good search that time by the whole line before the front for Texas Tech does its job. Robert Johnson and Daniels. Still brings up a third down and about a long four yards to go, though. And really only about three yards on forward progress. I'll say third and five. Chris Griffin brings the play in now. And again, no passes to the tight ends in the ball game. Coach Fran, I talked to him on the field for the ball game. He says he was worried about getting the ball to the tight end because of the man-to-man, -man, tight man-to-man -man coverage of the Red Raiders on defense. In this situation, Case likes to roll out or perhaps run the option. Let's see what they do. Going to his right. Being pressured from behind. Gets rid of the interception again. Third interception, and Case is furious with himself. It's Cap Adams coming up. As this game turned around. Big pressure. That was the that was the reason he threw the interception. He had to kind of loft it up because of all the pressure on him. And it allowed Adams time to come in under the ball. Well, yep. Tech will have it at the 30-yard line. And remember, Tech was one of the best teams in the country last year with the turnover margin tied for ninth. He was looking for Manley Woods. And again, a little bit short. Back to pass. That's Darden scrambling. He'll hang on to the ball and go out of bounds. Look at that block by Matt DeBuck with the block. And we'll take one more look at it. And, and watch number 24 now come into your screen. Uh, the wide receiver to make a block. Coming up right there on Rod Coverley. like a wrestling player. You may see the, uh, the cast that Coverly has, Rod does on his, his arm. It is uh, to protect that now coming back from an injury. On his wrist. Uh, right. Actually on the back of his hand. Second and three. The option. Red Raiders try it with hands barred and he lost a couple of looks like there. Excellent defensive effort that time. Celestine was there. Chris Carroll was there. Dan Coverly also helping out. And now Sharper is hurt way down the field. If we can pan the camera off to the left, there he is. Sharper it's is like a hamstring. Cramp, or a cramp, I think. Well, maybe. With the heat and the artificial turf, that definitely contributes to that. It's totally away from the play. Yeah, and there you go. It does look like a cramp the way they're working on it. Sounds simple, but those can hurt too, Mike. Absolutely. But it's not one of those permanent things, and usually you can shake those off maybe after a little bit of walking on the sidelines. And after our game today, we will resume CBS's coverage of the U.S. Open Tennis Championships. I want to remind you, of course, that anything you may have missed during the Lobo game, Van Tate will cover all the highlights coming up on the Q13 News. Busy sports weekend. Look at one of the many fans here. I tell you, Sharper is limping off the field. That cramp, he hasn't got rid of that cramp yet. He's got two guys helping him. Now we'll wait for the official uh, sideline report on the exact condition, whether it's a cramp or something maybe more serious. And when he goes out, it'll be one of those young kids that comes in to replace him. It'll be a Scott McGarrahan. That was a loss of about five yards on that last play, so crucial third down play for the Lobo defense here. One thing the Lobo coaching staff was concerned about was the depth of this team, especially key positions like the secondary, and it is McGarrahan in for Sharper in the backfield. Third and seven. No pressure. Lots of time, but nobody was looking for the pass that time. Intended for the tight end, Ayler, who was continuing his streak downfield but didn't turn around. Yeah, Scott, you got to turn around at some point. 
<laughs> Look at Billy Austin there, excited about the job he did. Austin thought he could make the uh, interception there. Well, it almost hit Ayler in the back, and Austin flew in. And that will bring up fourth down now, and Tech will try to take the lead with a long field goal. Austin went to high school with uh, Oliver. He's like one of those kids with smart kids, 3.4 grade point average. Billy Austin out of Houston, Texas. It's a freshman. John Davis, 34-yard line. Kick is on its way long enough. And Texas Tech for the first time today has taken the lead. Two long field goals have made the difference in this ball game. Of course, with the interception touchdown and the Red Raiders lead with 8.52 left to play in the third quarter. The score now Tech 20, New Mexico 17. Gonna take to the streets and spend some time on the road. I need a truck that'll take me where I wanna go. 2017, our score in the third quarter, 8.52 to go. Texas Tech with the lead for the first time, and we had some excitement during that last time out. The Red Rider who rides the horse around here uh, after every touchdown. The saddle started to slip. She went flying into the Texas Tech University sign. She's injured, shaken up a little bit, and the horse was running free. Look at this. Yeah, this was just a moment ago. The horse went up the ramp, and people were scattering off the field. You can see how the saddle has slipped off here, and the horse says, hey, Get me out of here. Football's not my game. That's double T. Heads up the, the ramp. And looks like she's going to be okay. Embarrassed, though. Yeah, I'm sure. But she went flying into the, the side over here yeah. where the concrete is, and I thought she was seriously hurt for a moment. I could see her losing it as she was riding down there. I thought, well, no, she's got to be a better rider than that. And she probably is. The fact is the oh, saddle yeah. slipped. Tech ready to kick it off. And again, it's Pagador and Woods deep. It's gut check time for the Lobos, folks. They've given up 20 straight. This one will be returned. This is the return we told you about. And not much doing on that one for Pagador. It's because Pagador didn't get behind the line. And they came in on the backside, did not block on the backside, and Pagador wasn't able to get up behind the wall soon enough. And Jody Brown was there to bring him down. So the Lobos start with uh, the worst field position after a kickoff down at the, I guess, 16 and a half yard line. And you're right, this is really gut check time for the offense, especially for New Mexico. Lobos look, uh, if you can tell from that far away on an angle, a little bit concerned. There's no jumping up and down or or apparently no screaming to get things going again. Stoney's numbers are uh, not very good, especially the three INTs rushing. Just seven carries for four yards. The hit up the middle. Eric Young is brought down hard by Zach Thomas and Sean Banks. No blocking. And Damon Wickware also in on it. That's a gain of one, second and nine. They had him down 17 to nothing, let him off the hook in the second quarter. And ever since then, it's been all Texas Tech. Cleveland Smith, now the sophomore, is the running back behind Case. Trips that top of your screen with three wide receivers. David Sloan closes the gap. Chris Griffin also in at tight end. Now one is a run option. There's Case trying to feel his way through out past the 20. And again, it's Banks to bring it down. are trailing here. Remember, they will have a very stiff wind to their back in the fourth and final quarter. And that's when the offense seemed to click. They've been fighting that wind now here for the last two hours. 738, 37 and counting. Eric Young is the running back now. He and Cleveland Smith seem to be trading off. Manly Woods also in a wide receiver. Bottom of your screen. Flip out to Young, rushed it a little bit, had him there, but it was a little strong. That'll bring up fourth down, and again, Texas Tech should have good field position. Coming in to do the punting again, Kobe Mansell, who has been bruised and battered as a punter. Right, he's, he's gotten tagged twice today, no call. You don't mind taking a hit for the team. A little bit of pressure. 
Foster. Got it off. It's a low kick. That'll be out of bounds. Well inside Tech territory. Spotted at the 42. Now you got to make sure the wheels don't come off. Because everything is going wrong for the Lobos now. Chuck Moeller, special teams coach, talking to his punter there, man. So along with Franchoni coming over to wonder what's going on after the 20-yard punt. Tony Darden will come in at quarterback now. Big shoes to fill with Mike Nesbitt gone, one of the top punters in collegiate football last year. Pass on the far side is dropped. Wide open and dropped, Jared Feebiger. Tech has had a couple of drops this afternoon wide open in the flat. And now we got another Lobo shaken up down there. And again, it kind of looks like a cramp injury. It does. Trent. That's right, it's Trent. Well, anytime you get the, uh, the physical exertion and the heat down there, it contributes to injuries of this type. And uh, I haven't seen Terrence Sharper see whether he's come back yet. Try to check that out for you. Looks like Coit is up and no, he's having a little trouble walking off too. Got to go out for at least one play. 20 to 17 is our score. The Red Raiders have scored 20 consecutive points. Rod Coverly in at one of the, the linebacker spots, the outside linebacker again playing with that broken left hand. Darden, who started the ball game, has completed only two of eight passes for 15 yards, while his replacement, Tony or, uh, Zebby Lethridge, completed 11 of 16 for 141. Second attempt. Darden back in. Bought in motion. Lots of time, lots of time. And finally, nobody open runs it out of bounds. And coming up from the linebacker spot, Blake Irwin to run him out. Excellent job that time by the defensive secondary of the Lobos. Every man was blanketed in excellent zone coverage. Well, there we are. Great day for football. Yeah, yeah. Welcome here to Jones Stadium in Lubbock. Why am I so surprised when I get on? <laughs> <laughs> I do this for a living, and there I am. As we and head back down to the field, 7.04 to go. Third and nine now for the Red Raiders. Dart will try to pass for it. Has a man over the middle and hits it. Still on his feet. Getting the first down is Bass. Killer. That is an absolute killer for the Lobos. No pressure. And that's the, you can't, the defensive backs can only hang in there so long. Him up that time. Finally, they brought Bass down. And all the way to the 26. The Lobos went with the blitz. You could see number two, Chris Carroll, get bottled up at the uh, at the line of scrimmage. Fresh set of downs as Darden changes the play at the line of scrimmage. No no pressure. Pressure. Across the middle. as good as Gavin Kroll's been catch earlier in this game. Pretty nice. Celestine was right there. Excellent coverage, but no pressure on the quarterback. First and goal at the two, trying to add to their three. And off up the middle, short. Crane went over the top. It gets down to about the one. And we'll have a timeout. Officials timeout as they unpile. McGarrahan goes out. The freshman safety. Daniel Johnson comes back in. More of a short yardage set. As Tech gets it down within the two-yard line. Six minutes left to play here in the third quarter. 
Lobos have been going against the wind ever since the first quarter. They'll try it again. The option, Darden with it. Score. Tony Darden has trouble after the touchdown, but he got in virtually untouched. Mike, Tony Darden was one of the really outstanding high school football players in Texas a couple of years ago. A lot of people wanted him. He was able to come here because some of his friends were here at Texas Tech. As you watch it again, you see the kind of athleticism this kid had. Redshirt freshman out of San Antonio. Nice job by that offensive front for Tech, and there's Darden. Irwin can't get there. Johnson can't get there. And Darden has his first touchdown. Kick is good. It's 10-point bulge. Texas Tech up 27-17 now. 27 consecutive points now for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Well, coming into this ballgame, Texas Tech was about a touchdown favorite, I guess, depending upon who you right. talk to. And uh, they're starting to show why the odds makers thought they would be. Tonight on Q13, 7 o'clock, join us for Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. At 8, it's the Country Music Hall of Fame, the 25th anniversary special. And then join us at 10 o'clock for Q13 News at 10 for the complete wrap-up of the news of the day, along with the weather and sports. Well, this tech crowd was pretty quiet earlier, but now uh, they've gotten into it, and it's easy to understand why. 42 yards, six-play scoring drive. It only took a minute and 26 seconds after that very, very short punt. As the Lobos have not closed, closed themselves in greatness here for the last couple of quarters, they've made lots of mistakes, and those mistakes have turned into Red Raider points, just like the Red Raider mistakes turned into Lobo points earlier in this ball game. Now they got to turn it around. Remember, 5.48 from now, they will have the wind to their back. If the Lobos could get something out of this drive, they would be definitely in the catbird seat for the fourth quarter. Well, just to get a little decent field position, get the ball up to the 50 or so. Hagador is deep along with Woods. Woods eyeing the ball, and he will not have a chance to run this one out. And contact after the whistle downfield is... A couple of guys get into it a little bit, which can be expected. So strange trying to predict a football game, trying to look at what will happen. Here the All-American candidate, the senior veteran, Stoney Case, is struggling. And the young kids for Texas Tech are doing a great job. Darden scores a touchdown. Lethbridge is thrown for a touchdown. Directed the job. Done a great job. Thrown over for over 150 yards so far. And Case is, uh, is faltering. But Stoney's the kind of kid who can turn it around at a moment's notice. And Stoney now is the moment. Shelton the fullback. Gavin Perlman is in motion number one. And up, up the middle. Eric Young takes a little stutter. Gains a couple. Keeps going. Good blocking downfield by the tight end Chris Griffin. Zach Thomas is there to make the stop. You know, one thing in, in Stoney's defense, and I, I, I think we ought to take a look at the fact that, that the guys he's throwing to, he hasn't really thrown to before. Gavin Perlman uh, played very little last year. Of course, Zach Wesley played a lot, but Manley Woods sat out last season, and I think there may be some timing problems the way Stoney is, is a little bit behind on some of those passes. Well, it would help if he had a little more time to set up, too. Well, that is true. Zach Wesley in, top of the screen. Lone setback as they go with two tight ends. Perlman, far side with the good hands. And catches it after a short game, but Cat is there. Catalyst Adams with the stop. Out of Henderson, Texas. Four interceptions last year, including plus he had two interceptions in the spring game. 36 tackles. Perlman looks like he has a uh, his helmet is really scuffed up. He must have took a shot earlier as Woods comes back in. That brings up third down and four. Four and a half to go third quarter. And Chris Shelton is in the block. To give Stoney a little time. Offsides will be to uh, look like it was David Sloan that jumped him. So instead of third and four, it's now third and nine. See what the Lobos have not made many mistakes that way. No. I mentioned that uh, Texas Tech has some New Mexico ties. Let me uh, expand on that a little bit. Dean Campbell, uh, the secondary coach. 
offense. Still third down. Ian Campbell is the uh, defensive secondary coach. Dick Winder, who coached at Tech, is, uh, is the offensive coordinator, who obviously has done a good job putting this unit together. So green. Here's the third and nine play. Now he's got time. Sets up downfield. And there was one of those misreads, I think. Case wasn't on the same page with his wide receiver, Matthew Wood. Now well, it's actually, I think down. that was Zach Wesley. I really think it was Wesley who was supposed to do the turn and go. And I said he just did a little, a little hitch pattern. That could be. I saw uh, Woods across the middle right. kind of shake his head a little bit. Once again, Texas Tech Red Raider defense has done an outstanding job. And they'll get great field position once again. Dane Johnson is back along with Matt DeBuck. There's the punt. No pressure this time. It's high. Too deep, and the buck calls for the third catch at the 44-yard line. Still four minutes to go here in the third quarter. It's been all Texas Tech since the first. Yeah, Lobos defensively uh, need to make a stop or a big play or something to, to catch momentum around. It's you're right. Tech has really since that field goal to end the first. I think, kind of seemed to be a momentum. Absolutely. Well, Tech seems to be real happy with Tony Dart, and he is back in. Of course, he doesn't need to pass a lot now, just run that offense, maybe work a little clock. And let's see what they do as the fullback goes in motion, and they set up to pass the ball. And it is complete. Now to number 17 for Texas Tech, making the catch, Malcolm McKenzie. He's first pass reception. Blake Irwin on the stop. I told you earlier, Blake's father and uncle both played for the University of Colorado. His uncle is the PGA golf pro, Hale Irwin. Billy Austin there initially. He's one of those freshmen that pressed into playing time. There's the handoff to the All-American High School player, Byron Hanspart, who has shown really a lot of talent in, in a short period of time with Blake Irwin there again. Well, the name uh, means a lot here at Texas Tech. Byron Bam Morris was the guy, the All-American running back they had last year. Scott Ayler also in now for Texas Tech. The, the tight end who almost got hit with a pass through the end zone last series. And spot is 11 carries for 65 yards. Not bad in your collegiate debut. Back in motion, downfield, the pass, lots of room. It is complete as Celestine breaks out to, to make the tackle on Stacy Mitchell. And now they're going to just about everyone right now. 12 yard cushion that time between Celestine and the receiver and Mitchell. Clock stops, 3.29 to go. Watch this. There will not be a white jersey anywhere near. Him. Celestine was five yards off of him. First and 10 at the 28. Now they'll run the option. Darden will keep it. Brought down by Daniel Johnson. Along with McGarrahan. It'll bring up a second down situation. And just Tech has been methodical here in the second half. And once they got that confidence built, and I think Spike probably told him at halftime, hey guys, You've been moving the ball. You've just been making mistakes. Stop making the mistakes. We'll win this game. Second and five. And right now they're winning by ten. For the blitz up the middle. The fullback brings it out. Todd Walker. And that will be near the first down marker. Lobos have been bringing in a lot of different players defensively to get something going. Uh, different looks. Different schemes. And has not been effective in the second half. Not once have they put pressure on the quarterback. Darden's numbers in the first half, 2 of 4, 15 yards. Second half, 4 of 7 and 60 yards. The pitch back. And blocked down. The first down carry. Again, it's Hanspart. They're rotating Hanspart and Crane. Burst. Billy Austin on the tackle and Coach Franchoni unhappy about something on the sidelines. And 
part again is the setback. Walker, the fullback. Taking the time at the line. And Spartan with it. Got by a couple of Lobos who crashed into the backfield. Terrence Sharper, one of them, and that's good news. He's back into the lineup again. Irwin there. Along with John Lisker slowly getting up number 73. I'd say Irwin is a redshirt freshman. He's played pretty well, though. He called his name a lot. Huge third down play. Third and four at the 11. If they can hold him to just a field goal here, the Lobos can come back and win it with two touchdowns. Third down play. Blitz from the backside. Got it. New Mexico picks it up. Has it. Burst. It's a foot race. Damon Burst. He's got to watch behind him. And Burst will score. That may be the first time Damon has gone 80 yards for anything at UNM. The touchdown by Damon Burst. Roston Thomas came in from the backside. I'm looking for flags. I don't see any. What a play. 6'4", 317-pound senior out of Tab, Virginia. Watch it. Darden, for the first time today, gets pressure. That's, that's Johnson that hit him, Daniel Johnson. And go DB. 75 yards for number 75. No, that's not slow motion. That, that is a, that's Damon. <laughs> I'll tell you, get out of the way, Mama. I'm coming home. Well, you talk about waiting for a big play, and you get it from your defense. Vail's kick is good. And suddenly the Lobos have some life after looking very listless for almost two full quarters. And 107 left to play in the third quarter as the Lobos have life again. Now, they still trail. They're still down by three. That 52-yard field goal right at the end of the first half is the difference in this ball game right now. Oh, what a play by Daniel Johnson from right here in Lubbock, playing in front of lots of his hometown fans. Johnson nailed the quarterback, Tony Darden. Darden coughed it up, and there was big Damon Burris. I think Damon thought maybe, hey, I ought to fall on it, but then one of his teammates said, pick it up. Let's watch it again. Johnson absolutely rifles Tony Darden. Boom! And there goes the ball. And I Coverly. Thought, yeah, I thought that uh, Dan Coverly would get there first. Coverly is saying, hey, I went on a Mormon mission. I didn't play for two years. I can pick it up. I can score here. Damon Burris says, there, nah, yeah, get out of the way. This is mine. <laughs> Come on. That is slow motion. That's got to be slow motion. Yeah, uh, nobody runs that slow. That's got to be slow motion. Well, our last TV game to end the season last year, Damon Burst had a big play. You know, the incredible thing about it, it wasn't slow motion, but Burst was running away from everybody else. The Red Raiders chasing him, and Burst was running away from him. Well, last year against UTEP, it seemed hopeless. UTEP running out the clock near the end, and Burst came up with a big strip to set up the winning touchdown. Ah, new life for the Lobos. You gotta love it. I think it even perked up the announcers. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Wesley will go down the hole now. Remember, the Lobos get the wind to their back in the fourth quarter. It's stony time. 27-24 our score. 107 left in the third. Lobos trail it by three. Bale gets that up in the wind and it just dies. Taking it to the Mitchell. Simmons gets, got sucked in there, number eight, and poor tackling that all the way down the line by New Mexico. Okay, now the Lobo defense has to come through here. Well, they did last time. Ball at the 35. Under a minute to go the third. Darden the QB. Green is the setback. it in 
inside the 20. Celestine goes on over to bring him down. Along with Rod Coverly. Coverly the senior. We're in the same position we were before the big play. The Lobos have to keep him to just a field goal. If they can keep him to only a field goal, then they're just one score down. With the wind to Stoney's back and 38 seconds left to play. It was great. Wingate, number 95 in the lineup for New Mexico. He has a couple of pins in his toe. And it was a high school injury, and he's been playing with that. Sharper tried to tackle too high that time. Colin Fumper, he, he likes to go high. He likes to go high. Good hitter. Oh, what a good tackler. He normally is. Just went high that time. Shot, but they got the first down. And that is the third there. quarter. Frank Butler there. We will switch in. So the wind will now go to advantage New Mexico. 27 24 is our score. The Lobos have stopped the bleeding, but can they do it again? We'll be right back. Lobo football is brought to you by Casa Chevrolet Geo, home of the people who care. It's Wild West Days at 95 Designer Wide Body Astro Conversion Vans. Loaded with all this luxury from just 21. For the first and goal, six trying to add to their three point lead. 27 24 our score from Lulick as we get ready to start the fourth quarter of play. Mike Powers along with Ted Dawson. Let's see the Lobo defense in action now. from Waco. Yep. Celestine, Butler, touchdown. Hart just didn't get low enough here. He got pretty low. Well, he did, but <laughs> not enough. Gee whiz. That's a great run. The extra points. A little bit to the left, but good enough. And on the first play of the Fourth quarter, Tech adds to its lead. It's 34-24. Well, I guess the only good news you can find there, Mike, is it happened in a hurry. Yeah. And now the Lobos yeah. have, have the entire fourth quarter to make their offense. Something happened with their offense. And try to, when they get to defense, at least on the kickoff, if they can score here, they can pin the Red Raiders deep. It'll be interesting to see who Spike Dykes goes with as his quarterback here in the fourth quarter. Fred Lyle talking to his crew, uh, cheering them on a little bit, trying to give them a little bit of encouragement. And in third quarter, stats look like this. 2-1 to one in the first round. never down. thought that the Red Raiders would have twice as many first downs. Well, and, and twice four yards passing. Yeah. By a good margin. Turnover, it's a total of nine. And the Lobos have all but uh, seven points off the turnovers. 24-24 our score, just four seconds into the fourth quarter. Steve Bagador is at the bottom of your screen, Manly Woods there. This will be the first chance the Lobos have to really get a good run back on a kickoff. Let's see if they can make something happen here. Now Manly Woods is the guy who has experience returning kickoffs, and two years ago, in fact, since his freshman year, he was one of the real threats the Lobos have had, and, and I think it's a good move to try to squib it. It goes to Woods, tries to get up into the, the wall. Edge, He's got the wall, but he can't turn the corner. And after the 25, 26, before he's brought down. And the Lobos will take over from there. Ryan Donahue with the tackle. We haven't heard much from the receivers today except for Gavin Perlman in the first half. Zach Wesley made one real nice play where a little spin move picked up about 25, 30 yards. 
It's been tell you, it's tough to get it when the wind's blowing in your face the way it has for the Lobos for the last two hours. It's tough to make something happen. Stony Case, very few opportunities in the second half. Look at one of three passing. Is, that's it. That's the only time he's been able to get the ball in the air. Running back is Cleveland Smith. Back to him. Down the sidelines. A little bit behind Perlman. And he's running. That was catch. Gavin makes that catch 99 times out of 100. Well, you're right. The Lobos are going to come out throwing here and uh, really take advantage of this wind if they can. Second and ten at the 26. Dave Sloan brings the play in from the sideline, replacing Chris Griffin. Woods to the top of your screen. Straight drop back, fake to the right. They go to the sidelines and well covered that time. A little hitch and go. It's well covered by the tech defenders. Woods Thomas in great. particular, along with uh, Adam, uh, Cat Adams. Woods just was virtually double teamed at the line of scrimmage and couldn't break free. Well, the incomplete pass is one thing they do at least for you to stop the clock. Although, you know, time right now is not that big of a consideration. Chris Griffin back in. That tight end. Placing David Sloan. There's a look at Gavin Worlman isolating on him as he goes down. Sideline nearly picked off by Adams and dropped and it'll be fourth down. Not a very impressive series at all for him. Four for three. Oh, it's up to the defense. That's a back to punt one more time. Last time, uh, I think it was the last time. Yeah. Charles Butler late getting in. He's now set one of the wide outs of the downfield for coverage. Lots of time. Not a bad mood at all. That's the buck with it. Going one way, cutting back the other. Try the other way. Up the middle. And for entertainment value, pretty high. Buddy Billingsley on special teams with the stop. Good coverage that time by the Lobos. Let's take a break right now. 14.20 to go. Still minutes. 34 for our score. Seconds. It's 14 to uh, 14.20 left in the fourth quarter. 34-24 our score. And they have made a quarterback switch. So that'll be Lethbridge back in there. We had a great second quarter. Now let's see how he does against the win. Goal. The pass completed out of bounds. Now why would they make the change at this point? So well with the I think they just decided they were going to let one quarterback play their first and third and one the second and fourth. If you're uh, Sony Cavazos, the, the other quarterback who hasn't played today, I think you're starting to wonder, gee, I don't think I'm going to get in there this year. You didn't play last year as a freshman? And they were kind of building up, leading everybody to think that he would be the starter today, has the most experience, etc., and we haven't seen him. That's hands wide. In there, number 95, John Wingate. Late flag, Mike. In the area where normally it's holding. Billingsley is the one who's complaining. And that is holding. Yeah, exactly what it is. So that will move Tech back. Discuss, discuss things with one of the co-captains, Dan Coverley. Lobos with captains Case, Coit, Coverley, Crowder, and Sloan to mess that one up. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the call. Foul was holding from the offense. Repeat the first half. And I think we can pick it up here. Yeah. And I think that is the fullback. I can't tell who it is holding there. was the one being held. Those stats for our freshman. Yeah. Excellent. First to 21 and 30. Up the middle this time. I think Spike there just wants to get out of this alive. Yeah. He wants to get out of this series without making a mistake. Daniel Johnson. 
hometown kid here making the tackle again. Wants to run the clock. Sheldon Bass brings the play in from the sidelines, and really what a wonderful debut for him. The one spectacular catch in the first half. Clock ticking away, 13-20. We'll keep you abreast of, of that situation. Coverly and Rostad Thomas, the linebackers, they'll blitz. Good coverage and a great catch. Butler with the coverage, pass with the catch, and they're going to throw a flag into Booth. Yep. yep. Butler was in there uh, really face guarding, in essence, Bass. You can see it right here. Now it's the Bass. Great athletic yeah, move. Just a wonderful play. And now will they sort things out? They'll decide what to take here. They may take the penalty. Well, they give them another down. That's right. That would be because it wouldn't be a first down yeah. otherwise. Not a first down. That's what they're going to do. And maybe we can read a little bit into what Charles Butler was saying. He was saying that Adams was pushing off me, or rather Bass was pushing off me. Essentially, you give up about eight yards. But you get four more plays off the clock. That is an interesting call. First and ten at the 42. All those jump contact is made. That will be an easy five yards for the Red Raiders. That's Damon Burris jumping off. Same count. Lobos thinking it's coming again. The red shirt freshman changes things up. And the Lobos. Lobos have a saying that they're using to try to inspire them this year, MTXE, and they've come up with this to help them mentally get prepared for going on the road seven games this year. Mental toughness, extra effort, and that's what they're going to need here in the fourth quarter. First and five at the 47. Looks like a busted play here. The quarterback will go down. Butler comes on in to make the sack, I guess, first one of the game. And now a late flag. And it looks like it'll go against New Mexico. Rostin Thomas upset. Not sure if he's upset at the flag or upset at getting hit. Let's find out. Texture is acting like uh, it was against them. And in fact, it was. And Ross and Thomas on the far sideline was having a fit about something after the play, and he may have been uh, the victim in this case. Well, now the Red Raiders starting to make mistakes again. Now we'll see if the Lobos can capitalize on it. It's second down in a train ride. About 22 yards to go. Now we dead ball. Personal foul. Offense. Still a first down. Yeah. Second, like second down. Yeah, it was second down. Yeah. It's second down. Let's see if they get that corrected. Now, he never made it verbally, but we do believe it's second down to 22. Pass heavy again, across the middle, and has the freshman one for time pass. And Johnson is there, and they'll throw a flag on that one. So it looks like maybe an exchange of personal fouls here. Now, the Lobos don't need one here, I'll tell you that. Face mask. Face mask instead. Oh. Mark off five yards there. And at Burton. Well, they are saying, he is saying second down. And that was it. Got the face mask, all right. That was Bo Adams with the reception. Not Sheldon Bass. Uh, 
second and ten is the official call now. Still plenty of time left. But the Longhorns have got to get tough here. To Buck in motion. Option to the bottom. Leftwich is stopped. still down. I wonder if uh, tempers are starting to be lost and frustration setting in, at least on New Mexico side. And Burst will go out with Wingate replacing him. Eleven forty-one. clock stopped. That's what's left to go in the ball game. 34-24 our score. Well, was at one point up 17 nothing. Seven consecutive points. That's what it's right here for the back. Uh, Hans Bard is the eye back. Third down and eight. Walker and Hans Bard in the backfield. Adams in motion. Across the middle. zone defense, you've got to get some pressure from your line. Watch Bass come across the middle, uh, almost completely uncovered. There he is, finds the zone, and the seam in the zone for the first down. Ball is at the 41, and again, a 10-point ball is for Tech. Trying to add to that, it would be very difficult to do that. That's part. No running room, swarm not, Johnson flies over the top. Butler also in there along with Billingsley. And another Lobo another Lobo is down. And that's Charles Butler who forced the play a moment ago. We haven't seen very many injuries of this type from Texas Tech. Of course, they practice every day in this heat and uh, very much used to playing on artificial turf. Looks like uh, Butler may have got a hip corner. As you take a look at Zebby Lethridge, the redshirt freshman quarterback, six foot, 188 pounder, out of Lubbock. As Butler goes off, Billy Austin comes in to replace him. You take a look at uh, trainer Larry Willock, who will be after uh, virtually his whole career at New Mexico, will be heading off to the Air Force Academy in just a couple of weeks. We'll take a position there. Officially retire at UNM. Those are pretty, pretty nice looking numbers for a couple of young QBs. Just one turnover, the one IET. Walker and Crane in the backfield. Walker and Crane. 81 before he was scored on. Austin was there with Johnson. Johnson did a good job coming from the backside that time. than 11 minutes to go. Billy Austin, number 16, 5'10", 192 pounds, redshirt freshman out of Houston. We compare him a little bit to Eric Jack, who played uh, both cornerback and safety for New Mexico over the years, is now with the Atlanta Falcons. I think he's a similar type ball player. A huge third down play. It's third and nine at the 40. Stop there. There's Francione right there waving it off, but uh, obviously he's not an official. Well, that was just a perfect throw by Lethbridge. On the run and down away from the defender. Good call right in front of Art Celestine there. Carroll checking into the ball game. 
Yeah, this Lobo defense has spent a great deal of time on the field since that first quarter. You bet. And last time up, the Lobos were three and out. It took about 20 seconds off the clock. Play Stapp is in, in the middle of the line, number 94 from Amarillo. And uh, up the middle to Walker, games one or two. Walker is a former walk on here. Johnson and Carroll again. And we tend to have inside linebackers contributing on the stop. This guy didn't play fo uh, football last year. Tried to get his academics in order. He's from El Paso. Now it's another third down. Third and two this time. I think the clock's becoming a factor. Yeah, now, it sure is. Pitch to Crane. Lobos try to force something to happen. They can't do it down the sidelines. And out of bounds. Out of bounds at the 11-yard line. But it is a first down. Everything shut down inside, so Crane went out. Good move right there on Austin. See, and that's, you know, that's a freshman mistake right there. You, once you square up, you need to go sideways with them. You try to force a runner to go inside where you have some help. Right. In your corner, you're all alone. First and 10 at the 11. First and 10, maybe down to the 9 before Johnson. And getting up a little slow. Yeah, there's the hole. Exactly right. 8.36 is where we stop play now. We'll bring it back another 10 yards up, up to the 21. Just been a frustrating day for New Mexico. By the offense, Uh, Lobos getting close to getting out of the gate with a loss here now, down by 10. Coach Fran, do we had some some problems on both offense and defense? Do we had a whole new group of wide receivers? He had, he had new uh, defensive backs that he had to work with, and I think he's uh, seen some problems that he needs to deal with. Here. So pass down the field, for about a five-yard gain. They say it didn't. They say he stayed in bounds. How do they do that? I can't imagine, but the clock is continuing to run. Looking at the Lobo coaches and see if there's any complaining over there. I don't see any. Under eight minutes to go. Second and 13. There he is. Again, hands mark up the gut. Seems to be a little bit better runner trying to go off tackle over the outside rather than up the middle. And I guess uh, for somebody his size, that's not unusual. Six foot 180, Crane 5'9, 191. Two bulldog backs for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Coming off a 6 and 6 season, a bowl game where they lost Oklahoma. Started 1 and 5 last year and really got it together near the middle of the campaign. To turn things around. And now Tech will call timeout. They'll use their first to the second half with 7.13 to go. The Lobo defense has a chance now to talk things over, too. Lethridge, the Honor, National Honor Society quarterback, comes over to talk with his coach. Here's a kid that played in four basketball games for Texas Tech last year. I guess it kind of shows you his athletic ability. Well, next week, the Lobos go back home. It doesn't get much easier, though. A Texas Christian comes to the University Stadium. It's on the road to SMU before going to BYU. TCU was four and seven a year ago. Former Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, head coach of the TCU Horn Frogs. Well, his debut was spoiled by the Lobos uh, two seasons ago. They came into University Stadium in uh, Dennis Franchoni's first game and were really spanked by the Lobos in an upset. Right. They got even last year, no, I guess you can call it the rubber game. Quarterback. 
quarterback Lethbridge. Finally, Rod Coverly is there. He didn't get the first down, Mike. He's only oh, I'm sorry. Right I'm sorry. Looking at the wrong marker. Thank you. So it doesn't really make that much difference. It's fourth down. They'll still go for the field goal. But if Coverly had kept his feet, he had him for a big loss. Brother Rod comes up there to wrap him up. So they'll go for the chip shot field goal. John Davis. Texas Tech this year, 37-24 over New Mexico as we pass the halfway point of the fourth quarter, 6.28 to go. That last drive, 15 plays, 64 yards, and more importantly, chewed up 7.52 of the clock. That's the big thing right there. Pagador and Woods are back. And this is Manley Woods, again trying to get into the wedge, taking him a long time to get up there. Same spot he was dropped down last time with the 23. It's just taking too long to yeah. get over to that side. Jody Brown, number 30, under the tackle. Well, it's got to happen quick. Two touchdowns, you've seen it before, it's happened. But now, I told you earlier about the uh, 49er scout who said the Stony Case reminded him of Joe Montana. <laughs> well, now's the time, Joe. Now those offensive linemen are going to be a little bit <laughs> Stiff standing on the sidelines because you remember the drive before that lasted about, well, it was three passes an out, so about 30 seconds. There's Stoney Case, senior from the passes, I'll tell you. Downfield, and as his man, that's Pagador. Inside the 40, down to the 30, 70, beat Bart Thomas. That's what they needed. Stone. I kept looking for a receiver who was throwing it to. And, and look, he had time. He had the blocking that time, and that's the difference. Cleveland Smith, the running back with the nice uh, block there to help out. 39 yards. Agador gets into the books as a low ball. Another 39 yard, and we'll be on the board. There was a shotgun for the first time today. Time again. Down the middle, into double coverage. Perfect pass. Perfect pass by Case. Granted, it was double coverage, but he threw yeah. it where he had to, and it went right through Perlman's hands. It would have been an incredible catch, but watch where this ball hits him in the hands. That's Coleman there, number 12, and Thomas coming over. And it is right there, maybe just about six inches long. And it just seems odd to have Gavin Perlman double team, but he has been the go-to receiver today. Second down and 10. Great block. Set up the screen. Now the inside screen to Zach Wesley. And that's the first time they had a chance to run that play today. It's Robert Johnson there. That's the run and shoot play. On that same play against Fresno State, Wesley went 77 yards for a touchdown. And they love it, but apparently the defense for Tech hasn't been giving them that today. It's third and four. Four down territory now for the Lobos. First down, New Mexico. That's Wesley again with Adams on the coverage. Hey, okay, there is time, Mike. There's plenty of time left. They got to make something happen now. Hustling up to the line. Five and a half minutes left to play in the ball game. Lobo's down by two touchdowns, but on the move. Now they'll stop the clock. Start the clock. Chain set, pace across the middle, finally to his tight end. That's slow to his hit hard, just shy of the first down at the 15. Coleman comes up to make the hard hit. David Sloan with his first reception of the afternoon. Clock running, 5.16 to go. Ball at the 15. Family Woods, bottom of your screen. For the first time, it looks like the tech defense may be a little bit tired. Pace has some room. But sure, wisely throws that one into the ground looking for Manley Woods. And that's fine. Stop the sure. clock. Second down, less than a yard to go. The corner shot. Bird was over there with a good coverage on Woods. Now all of a sudden, Stoney is over 200 yards. But those three interceptions are something he's going to be dreaming about tonight. And they're, they were not typical. I mean, it's not like the ball was deflected or tipped in the air or anything like that. I remember, that. Mike, it could have been four interceptions. He threw another yeah. one right to a yeah. defender. For Shelton, the fullback. Eric Young, the tailback. His throw goes in motion. Up the middle to Shelton. He'll get the first down. The clock will 
stop with the move of the chains. Jabbar Thomas there, number 51. Now the Lobos have to score, then they have to use their timeouts. They still have all three. And they wind the clock and get going. Under five minutes to go. Let's see if they go into the end zone now. Up the middle again, Shelton pulling his way. Looking to, to catch that tech defense by surprise, but Robert Johnson would have none of that. Clock running away from 430 now. And I'm surprised the uh, Lobos don't go and feed. Let's see if we saw a face mask right there on Shelton. Oh, my goodness. 420 to go. It is second and five. Ball up to six. The option, no. They'll give it to the fullback for the third straight time. Very much surprised by that. Zach Thomas, the middle linebacker. Well, I think Stoney has just realized that they are looking for the option out to the outside. The linebackers are crashing out, and he's trying to hit them quick up the middle. But the offensive line isn't hitting the quick opening holes. Clock running away from four minutes now. Third down and three. The Lobos have to score here in a hurry. And they can still get the first down. Now the option. The pitch out to Young. He stopped. No. He's going to get in. Oh, Missed play. tackle in the backfield. Young fights it off and goes in for the touchdown with 3.32 to go. And look who he ran away from. Unbelievable. Zach Thomas. Great, great effort by the young kid, Eric Young, the senior from Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Look at that. Just kept his legs churning. Used the, the left arm a little bit for the stiff arm, but you wouldn't think it would be enough to knock Zach Thomas away. All right, three and a half minutes. A chance to cut it to six. And Nathan Beal does exactly that. Well, we're kind of getting used to doing these kind of games, aren't we? It's been an exciting game. It's been an exciting season the last couple of years for the Lobo. 37-31 our score. We'll be back with the final 3-30. Well, uh, there you go. 37-31 with 3-32. Yes, it's reminding me of what happened at UTEP last season. Eric completed the 76-yard drive with the four-yard TD run, and it seemed like it took a long time, but less than They kick it away. Will bring it out to the 20. No time ticks off the clock with that. Paul Burt, our camera. A spinning football. And Paul's the photographer with a nice angle of the Gavin Portman touchdown. Photographer. Find anywhere in the country. Well, let's come in a quarterback again. Make a big play, stop them on three straight downs, or this game is over. Alton Crane, the lone setback, gets the ball and is started. Make the hit. Daniel Johnson in there. Hit. Gotta start using your timeouts. And also in there was Chris Carroll. Rasta Thomas is a little slow getting up. He's okay. Friend trying to get the Lobo started off. Went 2.56. There's right now two minutes and six seconds left in this ball. Game. Second and eight. Walker and Crane behind Lethridge. Good search by that offensive. It'll bring up third down. Bill Johnson is right. You better start calling your timeouts, Mike. Maybe you wait one more to see. Take it now. <laughs> 21 for the freshman, 109. Just one interception. Oh, well, we want a birthday to Johnson, turned 21 years old yesterday. Jake Jager's birthday today for New Mexico. So we'll go slides now.
a chance. Let's take uh, choice as player of New Mexico. And he's number one. Perlman uh, did a well of New Mexico, especially in the first half, came up with that great touchdown pass. Kevin Perlman is our Q13 player of the game. 57 pounds senior over a in receptions this afternoon, plus a great touchdown to at that point put the Lobos up 17 to nothing. And we'll round up some of the numbers now. The sub of the game, I don't think there's any question about that. After the first play of the game, Winslow Oliver went out of the ball game, and he had to be replaced by a guy who's done a great job this afternoon, number four. Eric Young, 16 carries, 44 yards, and the two touchdowns. Big third down. He's our subway sub of the game. Down the middle, and it's almost intercepted. Went Trent, through the hands of the receiver. And Trent Coit was right there. Went behind him. It would have been a great athletic play, but boy, did the Lobos need that. But the important thing is they're going to have two minutes and 32 seconds to win this ball game. We were talking about Eric Young, the subway sub of this ball game, and what a great job he did. Wasn't expected to play much, but he came in when Oliver was hurt. He's done an outstanding job. So look at Trent Coy, who almost had that INT. Eric Young is back as the lone receiver. Had a bad kick. Young will try to make the fair catch and does just inside the 40. And here we go, Ted. 60 yards away. 225 to go. The Lobos down by a touchdown. 37-31. to make a case for All-American. He can do it right here. There's a look at the Lobo fans. I'm not sure how many came up. They say seven buses. Uh, of course, they say over a thousand. They're all sitting in one section now. They filled one entire section. So. A lot of them on the road today. I drove over this morning. 60 yards away. Case will drop back. And off up the middle. They'll go on the draw play, which they haven't used today. That's Eric Young for about seven. Bart Thomas up there to make the stop. Thomas, Bart, and Zach are brothers. Pretty good tandem in the secondary for Texas Tech. It gets a pretty good call on first down. Well, at least it gets them thinking about the run. Case rolling to his right. Wide open, the receiver and out of bounds. Looking for Zach Wesley. The throw got there a little bit late, and he drifted out of bounds. Under two minutes to go, 156. Yeah, Tony tried to put too much touch on that one. Well, that's going to bring up a third down, third and four. Well, you're in four down territory, right? No question about that. 156 left to play in the ball game. Third Sit down, four yards to go. Season opener for the University of New Mexico and Texas Tech. Here we go. Looks to his right. This man shakes a guy at Swamp Manley Woods and just steps out of bounds. A minute 50 to play in the ball game inside Red Raider territory. That's the thing about Manley Woods. He did a little juke on Adams, and finally Johnson brought him out. But watch this move. Whoop. Take the cameraman out. It's embarrassing for a defensive back. First and ten. Ball at the 41. Lobos driving. They need a touchdown. Oh, bad snap. And Case falls on it back at the 48. Clock is moving. 144, 143. Loss of about seven. Snap was a little bit low from Brandon Turner. Lobos need to hustle. 130 left in the ball game right now. Try the shotgun again. Downfield, looking for Perlman overthrow. Now you got some problems because it's third down and long yardage. It's third and 19. Well, I suppose you try to get a little bit back with the first play and then give yourself a chance to get it on fourth down. They better get it right now, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Perlman's out. Steve Pagador made the big catch a little while ago. Yeah, Pagador is in. Little screen out to Young. Do they block for it? No. Gain of a yard. Clock ticks 112 and going. 
Johnson was over there to mess things up, and now Case will come up and call the timeout. Yeah, you better call with timeout. With 106 to go. Mistakes have been the killer. The mistakes, mistakes have been the killer on this drive. The, uh, the fumble snap and the shotgun has made all the difference in the world. The Lobos were driving. They were down at the 40-yard line, 41-yard line, then the bad snap. And it's tough to recover. Fourth down and, what, 16, 17 yards to go. And France says, I'll take a drink of Gatorade. Think about this a minute. 106 on the clock. 37-31 our score. Texas Tech leads it. And again, remind you tonight about Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman at 7. Country Music Hall of Fame anniversary special to follow. And then, of course, Q13 News at 10. And we hope to rejoin CBS for the coverage of the U.S. Open after the football game. But an exciting football game here this afternoon in Lubbock. Uh, a lot of mistakes, but a typical season opener for both teams. Lobos playing it within six of a, one of the top teams in the Southwest Conference last year, a team that went to a bowl game. An improving football team. Lobos hung right with them. Here we go. For New Mexico, fourth and 16 at the 47. Pressure from the outside, not too bad. Now up the middle, across the field. And I wouldn't have got it anyway. Perlman was about five yards short of the first down. And barring a turnover here, the Lobos losing ways on the road in non-conference play will continue. Exactly one minute to go. This case comes over now and talks to Fran about what think, happened on that last play? Yeah, I think there's lots to learn about from this game today. Lobos had some great individual performances, but they also made some mistakes. And I think Stoney Case will tell you in the post-game show that uh, he takes much of this loss on his own shoulders, those three interceptions. Alton Crane will be the running back. A fumble. Oh, and Walker falls on it. My goodness. But the clock continues to go, and I think the Lobos should, and I believe they do take the timeout. That will be their last timeout. Almost the big break. Fifty-three seconds left to play as the fans start to leave here. The happy Red Raider fan, Dennis Francioni, thinking about what might have been. Well, when you lose your top running back, a guy who's averaged right. you know, basically 1,000 yards a season since he joined the program, he goes out on the first play talking about Winslow Oliver. You know, just it messes up your game plan. Obviously, coaches need to adjust to those things. But when you take a threat preseason all-whack pick like Winslow Oliver and take him out of the mix. And he may be out for a while. With broken could, toes. Could be. Could very well be. That may have, so even though the Lobos scored without him, yeah. I think it may have set the tone for what happened later on. Well, they're going to put some time back on the clock here. And Tech, did they not have the ball with exactly one minute to go? And then there was the fumbled snap. And now we're at 53, so we'll have to wait and see what they do. I think the Lobos called timeout immediately, and the officials didn't get it called quite quick enough. Well, they put three seconds back on. They're now at 56. Last timeout for the Lobos, so they got to make something happen here. The quarterback quickly steps down. That's rich. Clock will now go, and I guess the important clock, I don't think it's going to matter. One more play after this, and that'll be it. Valiant effort by the Lobos this afternoon is going to come up six points short. Three interceptions by Stoney Case, but the defense forced some turnovers of their own. Some great individual efforts. Eric Young, Gavin Perlman certainly, Damon Burris with that exciting touchdown to keep the Lobos' hopes alive. 
but now it's on to TCU. recovers <laughs> and the clock winds down six five and that will be it again Walker bounces on the ball and Texas Tech opens up the season by defending their home field they will make the trip home very happy 37 31 the Lobos will fly home very disappointed losers here this afternoon they will regroup and host Texas Christian next weekend. Next Saturday is Spike Dykes and Brian Shoney exchange congratulations at midfield. Good game for both coaches. Obviously better for Spike Dykes. He has to replace an offense. And I think he found some guys that can replace some uh, outstanding offensive stars last year. Some defensive uh, problems for the Lobos. We'll talk about after this.